All right, welcome to episode 125 in the series where we're programming an NES game live from scratch. Um, tonight, we have uh, Jonathan from Old School Gamers on again. Hello. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different than our, our usual discussions. And this time, instead of just talking about NES uh, programming with someone who's learning NES programming, we're going to um, actually debug some stuff uh, live on the stream. Uh, so anybody who has questions, feel free to ask. And um, and uh, we're going to just see what, what we can figure out using uh, the debugger and you know, troubleshoot some of the problems and hopefully people will be able to learn from uh, the methods that we use uh, tonight. Me included. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely me included in that one. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like with a lot of these things, there's just like everything else, there's sort of this mystery around what's involved in doing the debugging. And so... um kind of showing that there's just this methodical step-by-step -step process that you can use. I think that's going to help people just feel more comfortable, um, especially if we start stumbling around through things. And, you know, um, I feel like people really feel good about, <laughs> feel good about their own progress when they realize that, you know, they're not the only ones who have uh, challenges with doing this stuff. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, have us stumble through this together. Absolutely. I remember watching your uh, uh, Zero uh, Pages or Zero Sprite. What was the title of those? Zero Pages, yeah. Mm -hmm. Zero Pages, yeah. And I think it was the second or third video. You were stuck on something, and for, I think, 20 minutes you were troubleshooting, and I was so thankful that you didn't cut it out. And I think a bunch of other people were as well. I remember seeing the comments. Is, mm -hmm. Do that again. Break stuff more. I learned so much <laughs> watching you debug, and I'm sitting there thinking, yes, me too. And, uh, yeah, uh, from our last discussion, uh, debugging is, it's a little difficult. I'm not, uh, my mindset just doesn't seem to know how to, you know, debug something that seems simple. Uh, mm -hmm. it's like, this is on the screen. Why? <laughs> Where's it coming from? I don't know. <laughs> right. Things like that. So, uh, definitely interested in learning this a lot more as I'm cool. sure others will be. All right. So let's, let's get into that. Why don't you, uh, share your screen and let's talk about some of the stuff you're working on and the problems you're having with it. All right. Yeah. Okay. I do share screen and I'm going to specify the code. All right. How's that look, Mike? That's good. It's, um, there's some compression on it, but it's, it's clearing up as, as it sits there for a moment. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Give it a second. I'll just talk for a second and kind of mm -hmm. what's going on. How's that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so this is my first program. Uh, I'm basically doing, if you've ever played the Atari 2600, NES Combat is what I'm calling it. And we're doing combat, but for the NES. Nice. I want to do a uh, four-player version of it uh, with some upgrades, of course. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a game that everybody knows. It's something simple. It's a single screen. There's no scrolling. Uh, it's very minimal in nature, but uh, nonetheless, I still found myself in a couple sand traps here. <laughs> yeah, what a great game too. That I re I remember playing that with with friends uh, just for you know you could sit there for two hours just kind of playing the different variations of that game and. And especially with the, the fact that it wraps around and when you get hit, you go flying in some oh, of the yes. modes. It's just, yeah. yes. <laughs> I never remember that too, especially when you get hit with mm -hmm. the tanks or something. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. go flying through the screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, the first part was that when I remembered playing the game is I actually had to go back to YouTube because I don't have my 2600. I was like, wait a minute. Was there a title screen? <laughs> uh, and yeah. There's not. Yeah. So yeah, it was uh, uh, that was the next pill that I decided to try and swallow is building a title screen and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, I don't know if you want me to bring up that one uh, image I sent you, but just different methods of you know title screen development you know, you know kind of got me down this rabbit hole and adding all of these uh, different uh, sections of code. Remember when we talked about uh, banks last time? Mm -hmm. And I've learned a great deal, and I've implemented 
a now 40k, uh, two 16k banks of uh, uh, memory in my Enrom uh, Mapper Zero code here, mm -hmm. along with the 8k of graphics. So uh, that, that's a big change. And after doing that change, I had a whole bunch of stuff on the screen. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> well, step one, we got the banks solved, and I understand it now. And uh, yeah. Uh, just to quickly gloss over that, but some of the details, uh, what happened is in the header, the INS PRG, I had to declare a two there instead of a one, because when you declare a one, what I learned from, and I believe it was Sumez uh, mm -hmm. is his name, uh, he basically described it as being mirrored. He said, if you put a one, then the first bank, uh, which is you know, bank zero, uh, will get mirrored between 8000 and a uh, dollar you know, C, mm -hmm. I guess, thousand or however you, uh, how would you pronounce that? C zero, 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 or you just say C. Yeah. Thousand? C. I, I don't know. I kind of go back and forth. C thousand, C zero, zero, zero. <laughs> it, it, C, C thousand sounds weird, but it does. But <laughs> at the same point, like saying C and three zeros is too, too verbose. I, yeah. Yeah. So, well, anyway, so uh, the C, well, I'll just say C thousand. It, it does sound mm -hmm. weird, but. So he said it gets mirrored automatically, so you lose that other uh, 16K because it's just mirrored. You don't have it. You're not declaring that bank because you've kind of lost it since you declared only one PRG mm -hmm. uh, 16K bank. And there's an upper and a lower. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so he said if you put a two there, that means you want to uh, define what's in those banks, you know, and uh, then you can actually specify it. And I said, oh, Okay, <laughs> now I know I can gain that other 16k that I lost. Yeah, and it's like I was talking about last time we talked. It's you know, it, it, imagine if you had a cartridge board, a PCB, where you were putting actual ROM chips on the board. If you put one, then you know that starts at the 8,000 range and and is 16k, uh, 16k, and then there's nothing at the C thousand range because there's only the one chip. Um, and so the NES for, I'm sure there are, I'm sure there are technical reasons why it does this. Uh, obviously you don't want it to just have nothing in that range, but it just mirrors, uh, whatever is in that first bank at 8,000, um, because there is nothing physically attached to the, um, address range there. Right, right. Absolutely. One of the things I did not understand, uh, and this may help me in the debugging, was why does the first bank start at 8,000 and not something else? Obviously, zero, 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 zero. I, I just, I was kind of scratching my head. I was like, why wouldn't you start at that? So. Well, because, so for the NES, you got to remember that access to everything on the NES is through memory. It's memory mapped. So, so zero is the RAM. Zero through uh, um, what is it? Seven FF. Seven FF. Right. Is your is your two K of RAM? That's where that's mapped. So you can't have two things in that same address range. Um, gotcha. So you need to. So so it's a it's it's really down to the. Um, it's it's down to the fact that we're so low level that it's not like we have it's not like the CPU even really knows what each of these are. It's just that by convention, the Ram on the NES or not by convention by design, but, but it's understood that when you're dealing with the NES, the Ram address range is from zero to seven FF um, because that's how it was wired up. That's how, I mean, that's again, like how literally low level all of this is. It's kind of, um, I think that's that's the kind of funny thing about it is it's so simple it's complicated. Yes, <laughs> you beat me to it. I almost said that too. I was like, wait a minute, that's so simple, but that's so complicated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so wrapping my head around that was uh, you know, so banking is, I wouldn't say in the bank, pun intended, you know, mm -hmm. but definitely getting better understood. So I kind of left uh, my notes up here, which I was learning, uh, you know, in Discord, and some of the guys are typing, and I was oh. I'm going to copy paste that into my notes and put it in my code. So uh, that's why I kept it. So uh, that's how it was explained to me. So mm -hmm. anyway, so now I have banks. And uh, so since I declared INS uh, PRG as two, I now get those two banks. So uh, 
would you like to see the uh, output that I'm trying to debug or kind of walk sure. through what I have in code or where would you like to start? You think? Yeah, let's let's see what's actually happening right now. OK, let me um, let's see if I open up this. You probably cannot see that, can you? Mm, nope, I just see okay. sublime. OK, all I'm doing is navigating to my um, code and I'm just going to compile it real quick. And okay. uh, so, I mean, I guess I could share that. Is there a way to share full screen? Yeah. Why can't I just do that then? Full screen. Mm, that didn't do it either. Okay. You may have to stop sharing for a moment and then reshare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me stop sharing. I see my face now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. Share. Entire screen. How's that? Yeah. So now you can see the code and the window, right? Mm hmm Awesome. Okay. So uh, never mind my crazy naming scheme. Basically, I just have... This is my series of folders. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. version 4. I'm working with controllers, uh, which is the second issue of my debugging. Uh, the bat file is very simple. It's basically just, you know, running the NASASM uh, against the uh, uh, ASM code. Um, can you read that? Does that? Yeah, no, okay? it's all looking good. Okay. And I'm using a new feature that I learned in Discord, this little minus S, which lets me uh, see how much memory I'm using in each bank, which I really, really like. So, okay. So it's going to compile, uh, well, I guess technically assemble mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, first uh, game controllers uh, ASM into the NES, which I'll go ahead and do just to make sure that we do have the latest and greatest. So here's the output. There's the total uh, 40K, and there's my four banks. Um, the last bank is where I put my char file, so all of that is used. There's zero remaining. Yep. Uh, and the rest are, you know, used up here and there. <clears throat> um, good for that. What I don't have, Mike, and if you have any insight, I don't have a lot of information on what should go into which bank. It doesn't seem to be defined. Everyone just kind of has their own preference. And if you have any insight to that, you know, I'd be uh, more than apt to uh, hear what you have to say on that. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there are. There are times where it matters because of the fact that you're using a mapper that does bank switching. Mm -hmm. And so for those scenarios, the bank matters because if you put it in the wrong bank, it's not going to run the code you think it's going to run. Um, but for NROM, uh, it the only thing that matters is your vectors, your reset, NMI, and... Uh, those being at the end of the memory address range in your ROM uh, at okay. uh, the the F F F uh, A B it? and C A B and C is yeah. it's, it's C D and E or no B E and F whatever oh no because they're two bytes at a, a, a pop so it's whatever it is I think it's E C and A or something like that but whatever they are you you need to make sure that they're at the right position because okay. otherwise it won't run your reset code when you launch the the game so yeah yep, so it's ffa you're right yeah so um all you're telling the assembler there is you've got this bank yeah so you're saying okay bank three is here it starts at the uh, e thousand range um and then um you're immediately saying okay now this next stuff i'm doing is at fffa and then you define those bytes for the label for NMI reset and the R IRQ, which you're not doing anything with. Right. Okay. No, oh, thanks for the uh, explanation. So definitely going to keep this here. And I have a lot of uh, empty space between E, mm -hmm. we'll call it thousand. <laughs> I still don't know what to call that. And the bottom three, well, six um, bytes of yep. uh, ve vectors. Okay. Uh, just for anyone who is watching either now or later, I was going to show what... I was trying to make <laughs> so you can kind of see the goal versus the uh, actual. So I don't know if, uh, oh, no, that's not the right one, is it? Is it this one? Ah, there it is. This 
it's not in color, obviously, but mm -hmm. does that come out okay? Yeah, it looks fine. Okay. So uh, the guys who made MorphCat games, uh, Nicholas and Julius, Nicholas has his own website on graphics design. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I went through it, and he had this F FC, I guess, Famicom NES planning sheet, screen design. Yeah, I was wondering where you got that from. Uh, yeah, I, uh, it was his website, and um, I, I can send you the link uh, if you mm -hmm. want to add it later. Uh, I was, I thought this was wonderful. I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is great. I've never been able to figure out how to do this or get graph paper. I don't know what to do. And each one of these rows are eight by eight pixel squares mm -hmm. uh, going across and up. And he even puts. You know the visual, you know, two twenty four, you know, for PAL uh, section here, you know, you know, so that you know where your overscan is, so that you know not to put stuff in that row. Right. So, anyway, this was kind of my idea of what I wanted to go with, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, as you can tell from our mess in the screen, there's there's some goobly. There's characters coming in up here, mm -hmm. uh, which seems to be pushing everything to the right, causing the NES combat to kind of wrap. And even the T seems to be down a row. So there's definitely some kind of incremental row comparison or something being moved off to the right. That's, that's the best I can do. Maybe. It. It, let's, so let's start with this. Let's go to the tools. Okay. And let's look at, um, wait, where's the debug menu? Uh, Bugger? Yeah, go to debugger, and then uh, there's an option. Is it in here? or So one there's of the things option. you can do is, um, here, let's close this for a second. Uh, let's go to uh, the debugger, yeah. Okay. And then let's go to... Um, well, I have F-C-E-U-X as well. No, no, this is fine. Um, okay, just cool. If you open up uh, the options okay. and go to preferences, preferences. Uh, there is a way. Uh, click on... Um, Advanced? Enable developer mode at the bottom there. Oh. Enable developer, okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. Now, does and that say by default? <laughs> yeah. And then okay. click on where it says debug now. Okay. Cool. So now these are all the same de debugger menus that are available when you open the debugger, but right from here. So you don't have to Oops, I mess around that. with that. Um, so click on debug and go to PPU viewer. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. So. Ah, this is interesting. You can so actually see the tile memory address and the tile it's using. Yes. So that's the first thing. The second thing is let's go to the CHR viewer. Let's see what your CHR looks like. Okay, so you've got your sprites at the top and you've got your tiles for the background at the bottom. Okay. Okay. That's fine. All right, so let's... What I wasn't sure of and what I wanted to look at was if we went to the name table viewer, if we were going to see literally what was on the screen right now, or if we were going to see some weird shifted version of that um, where mm -hmm. things were aligned, but but not correctly. And so um, what this is telling me is that the way you're loading the tiles into the PPU is is not correct. Uh, uh, there's some sort of there's some sort of garbage data that's coming in initially that we need to um, deal with first, and then that should help with the alignment of everything. I think. Don't tell Sumez <laughs> <laughs> or or Kevin. <laughs> those okay, that were helping me. <laughs> I thought I was doing good too. I was like, oh, I'm gonna make a title screen, honey, and. Yeah, you know, my wife is like, "What? What's a title screen?" I was like, yeah, "The first screen that comes up, the title." <laughs> you know, and I'm laughing. Like, how do you not know what a title screen is? He's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." I like, oh, well, man. I mean, <laughs> you you got a lot closer than I think most people get when they're doing this because um, it it is loading some of it correctly. Um, so let's take a look at the code that's actually doing the load of your uh, background tiles. Okay, um, I'm just mesmerized by this whole main table viewer like 
I see it over here, and that's I remember that from a video of this horizontal mirroring. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of triggering a lot of uh, videos and posts. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, I think I know what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and close this out. Yeah, we can even close the emulator for now. Okay, is it coming in through? Uh, okay. Yeah, everything's coming through great. Awesome. Okay. It's kind of amazing given that you're like halfway around the world. I know. <laughs> Um, let's see. So I can show you where I'm loading, uh, or defining yeah. the screen and then where I'm loading it. Okay. So I have two of them. I have this one, which is a uh, background that's actually level one. <laughs> Got to rename it. This one is actually the title background. Okay. So, uh, it's just, you know, tiles are defined. Um, I'm assuming that the, pretty much the first two rows are over scan and, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, using the tiles here 25 is basically the blank one uh, mm -hmm. and then just kind of filling it in using that uh, picture that i showed earlier is kind of my reference um so i double checked this even triple checked it but i'm pretty sure it's not this but i'm where do you want to start <laughs> no I, I i agree i think it's not that let's look at the code that's actually trying to load that into the name table okay so title background, I usually cheat and just highlight it. And then I see the little white flash over here and it lets me know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So I made an outer loop um, and an inside loop. Uh, mm -hmm. And this was uh, something that I learned from uh, Kevin, uh, getting the high bite of the title background and uh, using that as basically the, you know, the low and the high uh, pointers of that array of bytes mm -hmm. starting off the index of the outer at zero and then the inner at zero and it basically runs until it um, loops over 255 and goes back to zero so that it's you know comparing zero so it knows that it did the first 256 mm -hmm. uh, and it keeps doing that uh it, well, then it'll increment X, and then it does it four times. So that's supposed to be four times 256, which gives us the 1024 uh, bytes uh, until it branches out from the outside loop when it hits four. So Okay. I mean, and that, that all sounds good, but I think I know what the problem is. Um... Awesome, because I have no clue. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what's wrong. So, and and then we can also address something that I mean, it's 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 one of those things where it's kind of a nitpicky <laughs> optimization, but that no, it's up to I, you whether you want to do it or not. Absolutely, if it's if it makes it faster and uh, better, I'm all for it. I'm not a I don't have any enough experience to tell someone that, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, you'll see why in a second, um, because I think that the, I, I, I'm trying to favor clarity of the code over performance right now. Um, but, you know, there are certain things that just make my brain itch when I see them. And so I have to, um, sure. I have to try and, you know, be reasonable about whether or not I do those. So, the first thing is, um, so if you look at 372, you're doing load A zero and then storing that into pointer low, and then you're loading high of title background and storing that in pointer high. Mm -hmm. But there's no guarantee that the low byte of title background is actually zero. Um, so what I think is happening is because of the alignment of the title background, what's happening is that you're, you're getting, you're starting a little bit before the data actually starts. And what you're seeing in the back, in the name table being loaded is, is just random data in the ROM. So what you need to do is you need to change the load a, uh, zero to be, um, pound low. L O W, I, I think is the syntax. I'll look that up while while you're typing. Um, uh, so it's like an initialization thing. I'm not initializing pointer low correctly. Correct. So what you're doing is you're. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Let's let's say let's say that um, title background is starting at address three f seven five. Mm -hmm. Well, what you're uh, initializing your pointer to is 3F00. Zero, zero. Mm -hmm. So the first 75, 76 uh, bytes of it are going to be wrong. 
so it's offset. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I think that's the right syntax. I'm I'm looking it up to see because I really don't remember um, how you do it in. Uh, yeah, it's low it, like that. So you should be good. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd like that. <laughs> nice. You're forever in my source good. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay, so I saved that off. Now All that right. makes complete sense. Um, and, and, and there's no uh, offense here. It's just so that I can go back and look and see what I changed myself. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, old code, like comment, comment it out just so I can say, oh, that's why I changed. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Fix it. Okay. So why don't you reassemble that and run it? Oh, I have sure. a feeling that I'll probably. That's it? I thought there was more. <laughs> no, I think that's probably it. Okay. You gobbled up another bite of my memory. That's <laughs> horrible. So just out of curiosity, do you prefer FCUX over Messin or which one do you For the debugger stuff, I Messin is um just far superior. Yeah, I um, noticed the colors were way different though between the Yeah, three. you can change the palettes. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. So that's wow. way more like what you were trying to do. Much, much closer to what I was doing. There's still, well, I'm loading sprites because, um, as you can see. Yeah, see. if you go to your, uh, go to debug and then go to the PPU viewer again. Um, I mean, the th that those I think are probably just mistakes. The extra little blips on the screen, not the sprites, but the, you know, the little, I think this one. Pieces. I think this one and this one I put in purposefully. I don't remember mm -hmm. putting in this one. I can look at the uh, look at the picture. Yeah, I did put that one and that one and okay. So there's one that's I uh, maybe just that that might just be a typo. So that's that's probably pretty simple. Well, you ruined my whole <laughs> hope of this being extremely difficult. It was just an well, but that's the thing is that it's it. it well, it is an offset, but it's not like it's not like you t you know you typed it wrong or you defined it wrong, and and these are the things that people struggle with when they get started, right? Because right. you you didn't even it didn't even occur, I think, for you to consider that. Well, I'm loading the position of I'm loading the position of that. Um, that set of data about the background into the background tiles. Uh, yeah, into into these pointers and and uh, you know the sort of I'm trying to think of the right way to express this. It's like it didn't even occur to you that that loading of zero was wrong for some reason. Um, but you know that's what people do when they get started, and and it's not unique to you. It's like you know people when they're learning things for the first time. Sometimes you get so frustrated with what you're doing, you're kind of like just trying a bunch of things and then you forgot you did it. And then you're like, Oh, yeah. that's why it was broken this whole time. And you know, yeah, I think it was just the mentality of, uh, and me, and it's not of any fault of bunny boy. I mean, the guy's, you know, terrific. He put together all those nerdy night tutorials, but mm -hmm. I think somehow I had it ingrained in my mind, you know, um, I'm going to close this out just to see if this little bug here goes away. You can even do a, if you rebuild it, just a control T will reload the ROM. Really? Mm-hmm. Look at all these shortcuts I'm learning. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the kind of shortcuts I really like. But uh, the, the tutorials, I think I just had it ingrained in my mind. Okay, that was it. Okay. Cool. So I had it ingrained in my mind that I needed to zero out all the memory. <laughs> so whenever I'm starting up something, ah, start with zero. Start with zero. I got to start with zero, no matter what. Right. Start. Yeah, I know what you mean. I and and it was such a you know minor thing. It's just funny to think that that's what um, that's what actually uh, offset everything. But you, I mean, you you were instinctively you were right about the problem right it was offset mm -hmm. in some way but it you needed to see how the tools worked to help you figure out why it was offset and and then you know kind of backtrack from there right yeah yeah so i mean yeah that's exactly it instead of assuming you know and that's the one that always bites you in the butt <laughs> instead of assuming that the code knows where 
you're trying to start, you have to tell it. This is low level. You have to mm -hmm. really say no. It's this address starting mm -hmm. right here. Yep. And the only way to do that is to initialize it correctly. So no, no, that was great. Um, so initializing variables is definitely okay. I, I probably need to double check a couple other things, but uh, um, no, that makes sense. Um, that was good. <laughs> that was a little easier than I thought. Uh, yeah, that was good. Cool. Uh, wow. Okay. And then uh, just to go over it real quick, you went debug or no option preferences. And then enabled developer at the bottom. Okay. And what did that give me that you did not see over here initially? That menu right there, that debug menu. Okay. Because if you go to tools, you can open up the debugger that way if the debug menu isn't there. And then in the debugger, let's open up the debugger right now. If you, okay. yeah. If you open it up, you have all the same options under under here mm -hmm. as you do under that debug menu. But mm -hmm. it's this way, if you don't care about your code at the moment and you're trying to look at some graphics artifacts or something like that that's happening, like we did, mm -hmm. um, you can you can just jump right to that instead. Yeah, I'll admit this screen terrifies me. <laughs> it's a little intense. There's well, a lot going on, and so I kind of don't know where to be. Again, so look. Let, let's 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 do that. Let's um, press Control T. Okay. All right. So now we're at the beginning of your code. What right? did Control T do? It it reloaded the ROM. Ah, okay. So this is starting at clear memory all the way at the very top. Um, well, I guess technically after INS PRG. De declarations or yeah so it starts right at your um if you go to or well no i mean it just yeah it's your reset vector so the reset vector is pointing to your reset label so why don't you okay. scroll down to that this one right here mm -mm. at 28 no that's not a, a label it's a do a do a search for whatever your your game oh, reset. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. That's reserve uh, an address. I know what you're talking about. The actual reset, which is down here a little bit. Right there. Yeah. Thanks. So too. you can see if, if to the left in the debugger, that's the same code. S-E-I-C-L-D. Ah, gotcha. And you can even see, you see it says it's bang two with the C-1000 range there. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look to the left on the debugger, it has the address of the instruction and it's at C thousand. Gotcha. So, so this is kind of this is good stuff. I mean, this <laughs> is where where sort of the rubber hits the road, right? Because yes. you're you're before you're just looking at a file and and kind of writing code out, and and it doesn't. At least for me. Um, when I was first learning how to do this kind of stuff, it didn't really click to me how the what the relation between the one and the other is. And I think based on the questions you were asking, mm -hmm. it was similar. So now when you look at it here on the debugger level on the left, it's like, okay, so the CPU's instruction pointer is at C1000, which is where my reset code is, which is what I told it to do. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, now I see how that all correlates. Yeah, because the reset is what's called on the first uh, uh, vector, or it's the first vector that gets called, right? Yeah, when the CPU starts up, it knows to look at that location in memory to find the address mm -hmm. that it should go to to start running whatever code um, needs to be run. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So... Man, you just connected so many dots. <laughs> You're not... I, no, honestly, it's like... I honestly need like a second to let that settle. Like that really connected so many dots. It's just unbelievable. Uh, well, just and that's that's really the again. It's like that that whole thing of it being um, simple but complex, and and you know all of these pieces coming together. It's th that's the that was the good thing for me about the the Nerdy Knights tutorials is that they they did kind of pull that stuff together in a simple way that was. Um, not intimidating compared to you know other tutorials that are maybe super technically focused but at some point once you start writing code unless you're just kind of interested in kind of just getting something out there as quickly as possible um 
and it sounds like you're you're more more of a I want the deep knowledge kind of person. So you know, you start questioning, well, why am I doing this? Why does it go there? Why why do I have to put this thing here? Um, and that's where having the debugger at your disposal is really helpful um, mm -hmm. because it now gives you this ability to actually see all of this in play in an environment where, you know, we can't, I mean, you can with the right tools, you can hook up a debugger to the actual NES hardware and see it actually running that way on the real CPU. But failing that, you know, this is the best alternative that we have to be able to, um, uh, to be able to see what's actually going on at runtime in the game. Oh, okay. No, that's, uh, this is terrific. It, like you said, the rubber hit, this is where the rubber hits the road. It's, it's, it makes it, like I said, cause when I open the screen, it's just overwhelming and just being able to understand now what I'm looking at over here on the left, mm -hmm. that just cut a third of the screen and from terrifying to okay, I can at least look over here in the left. I know right. what's going on. <laughs> right. And so there's there's some really um key things to look at. So why don't we start like stepping through this? Um okay. and you can use um the F10 key to step line by line through the code. Okay. Um F10. Oh, so this is like Visual Studio then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so, like, okay, so stop for a sec. So you saw that load X 40, right? So if you go over to where it's a CPU status at the top there, um, just to the right of your assembly code, it has the registers. It has A, X, Y, your program counter, and how many cycles have passed on the CPU. So you can see that X has, excuse me, 40 in it right now um, from that load X instruction. Gotcha. Okay. And so now the next operation is to store X into control two frame counter at 4017, right? Um, Can and I so the code real quick, just to kind of yeah, sure. Because I was like, what the heck is control frame counter? <laughs> Okay, so 4017. So gotcha. there, this is something that somebody actually asked in one of the videos um, I posted. Um, Put this over just a little second. Oops. I'm trying to think what which one it was. I think it was the Zero Pages episode on sprites. They were asking why we were setting things in the 4017 register. Isn't that for controller two? And so that's what that label there is. Controller two and frame counter at 4017. Um, and what's nice is if you highlight it, you can see some details about exactly what's at that register um, at 4017. Right. So, you can read the, but the upper bits are for controlling the frame counter, which is used for audio. So they, they kind of overloaded that one register, whereas register, register 4016, which is for controller one is only for controller one. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure this one has dual purposes. The lower bits are for the controller and the upper bits are for the uh, audio just i guess they they wanted to save the bite um gotcha. so um that makes sense so yeah that's just what the machine refers that address or refers to that address by internally then that's yeah it's well those labels are i think uh meant to be helpful while debugging because if it just showed 4017 um, unless you re remember exactly what 4017 is, mm -hmm. um, it can be um, it can be helpful to have that, and especially because you can highlight it and see these these details documenting what that register does. Gotcha. So okay. you're so you're storing that value, and so with the value of four zero in hex, um, uh, four is the is the third bit in the highest byte which is that I bit on the bottom of that tooltip. If you look, it says right frame counter and it has M I and then a bunch of dashes. So that third bit that I is, is what you're actually setting to inhibit sound IRQ so that no sounds play. Say that again. I, I was tracking, my eyes were trying to track 
what you were saying, or my ears are trying to listen, but my eyes are trying to find what you were talking about. And so I kind of, there was a disconnect. <laughs> yeah, sure. So if you were to write out um, the value four zero in binary, you'd get zero one zero 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 zero. Basically, the the upper four bits of that byte, um, mm -hmm. the the second to the last bit. Uh, which is represented at the bottom of the tooltip as I, mm -hmm. is set to 1. And so when you write that to 4017, I is being set to 1, which inhibits the flag. It's one uh, of those things where it it that always confuses me. Yeah. That to to stop the, the IRQ, you have to set the flag instead of unset yeah. the flag. Yeah. Uh, I need so, to turn it on to tell it to turn it off. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you're telling it don't don't do the interrupt that's used to generate sound because right now we're initializing and it would just be garbage noise that would happen if anything happened at all. Okay. Okay. Oh, I get you. All right. So so now we're we're doing that store of X into you can uh, go back to the debugger and hit F10. And we're gonna we're gonna you know store that. And then we're going to load X with FF. So if you hit that, you'll see that X again changed to FF. And then you're going to hit it again to change, uh, to transfer X to the stack. Now, if you go over to the right where the uh, registers are, right next to it, there's stack. Okay, I see it. And you can see that became FF. Okay. And that's because when you did transfer X to S, you know what? I should have had you look at that. If you go, this is kind of cool too. If you go up to the top where the play controls are, mm -hmm. the play, pause, whatever. If you go to the the right a little bit, there's one, I think that's a rewind. Um, it's the last one. Nope, too far. You skipped one. This one? Nope, one, one back. Yeah, okay. click click on that. So this is the other really powerful thing. Oh, when it doesn't oh. crash. Nope. <laughs> Let's try it again. Um, when it doesn't crash, you can rewind your your the emulation of the game um, okay. at a at an instruction level. So uh, hit Control T to reload the ROM again. Control T. Okay. And then F10. And then F10 to the point where just before we actually do F10 on the TXS. So one more then. One more, yeah. So if you go over to the right, you can see where the stack is. It says SP is FD. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, we want to initialize that so that the stack is at the top of that um, that address range. So the stack, by default, if I remember, I will double check this. It, it the the upper byte of the stack address is fixed. You can't change it. I think it's. I want to say it's one, but um, I will check that while we're talking. Um, and uh, and then the value of SP is the the, the lower byte of the address. Um, and so, what you know, when you push something onto the stack because you either call a function or you're you're you want to save off the value of the A register, mm -hmm. um, it's it's decrementing that value, the FD. Uh, which will become FF by one at a time so that you can, um, is nestev dot up right now? Nestev's down? I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or it's not working for me when I try to go to it. Um, you want me to try real quick? Let me see. Yeah, see if you can. Let me see. Uh, I'll just go to Google search. I'm saying taking too long to respond. Yeah, I'm getting the uh, the old circle of death here. All right. Well, it's I I can't remember what what the byte is at the at the address range but the point is that we need to initialize it so that we're taking advantage of all the memory that the stack can so that's why we're moving ff into it um so that's what the txs is doing it's just transferring the value of x into the s um stack pointer so you okay. can hit f10 and 
go back to that and then you're incrementing x and since it's ff it's just going to circle back to zero now one of the things to note that's kind of interesting about when you do that mm -hmm. is that um anytime you increment a register and i'm pretty sure that this is true with um with all of the registers uh yeah anytime you increment a register and the value becomes zero Mm -hmm. um, if you go over to the flags underneath the register um, list there, mm -hmm. you can see that the zero flag is checked. Ah, uh, gotcha. That's okay. what it, I think that's what it said over here. Yeah, the Z, I think that's zero. Yeah, flag. so, it, right. So incrementing the flag will affect that zero. Uh, sorry, incrementing X will affect the zero flag. It'll gotcha. it'll set it if the value that results in that from that increment becomes zero. Okay. Definitely. Now that'll become useful in a minute. Okay. All right. So yeah, now here you're just initializing some more things um, by storing the zero into them. So you can just step right through all of that. And then the bit and bipple and some of that things that was copy paste from folks that said this is how you do it. Don't ask. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's one of those weird uh, things about um, the the um, trying to be uh, super efficient about stuff like that. It, mm -hmm. it, I don't know that we need to go into it right now, but it it's just a it's just a trick because of the. Because of the way that bit works in terms of it reading certain bits of the of the byte that it's looking at and setting flags based on that, then it if because it affects those flags, it's the same as checking if of, of if uh, the value was positive or not. It it it's um, a little a little uh, esoteric. Gotcha. Uh, just a side note: something I noticed as we're going through this. Mm -hmm seeing this cycles mm -hmm. and i see a lot of people talking about cycles and i think we briefly touched on it last time and it was a topic i was kind of interested in with the the lewis script that you know um that that you had given me um which i think isn't the one i was looking at in that one video it, it behaves a little differently than what i thought but okay uh, you were able to show the number of cycles per frame, I think. I I'm not sure exactly the math you were doing, but you were happy when it wasn't close to 2,000. And you were yeah, very I happy was tracking, yeah, I was tracking how many cycles the CPU took from the beginning of the NMI to the end of the NMI. That's what it was. And the reason is because there's only so much time um, from the point that the screen has drawn to the point where it has to draw again to achieve 60 frames per second. So if <clears throat> your code in your NMI takes longer than that time, you're going to get into a situation where you're doing partial updates um, while the screen is being drawn. And at worst case, you're going to have these weird partial updates um, to the screen while it's in the process of drawing, uh, which will create all sorts of problems. Yeah, uh, best good. Sorry, go ahead. No, I just said that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Well, um, okay. Best case scenario, you're going to run into a situation where you're just running at a slower frame rate because even though you're accounting for it, um, you still are taking too long to update the... Um, update your code in the NMI and as a result um, can't push the can't push the pixels fast enough basically right uh, okay so that's that's why I was I was timing that was because I was concerned that my dumb inefficient way of doing things was too inefficient and it turned out that um, at some point I had moved everything out of the NMI. So that helped. And, and really the, the big thing that I'm doing currently that is super inefficient, but at the same point um, just makes my life so much easier is I'm just re updating the name table attributes every cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and even though that's uh, inefficient, it, 
it, because I can just blast that in every cycle, it makes the code much easier to work with. So um, that was my big thing was I didn't know if it'd be possible to do that without running out of time. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so those cycles that are represented there are the count of CPU cycles that have occurred as we've run through these instructions. Um, every instruction, depending on what it's doing, will have a certain number of instructions that it consumes because um, you don't just, you know, instantaneously get the value from RAM into a register. The, there's, you know, uh, I, I believe it, you know, if you highlight over L, uh, load X, you'll see a, a thing where it tells you how many cycles it is. Yeah, so there's two, mm -hmm. uh, there's two cycles there. The first is to kind of set up the request for the value on the bus. And then the second cycle is that it actually gets loaded in to the X register. So it, it acts almost like uh, like a network internally where there's a sin then a sin ack kind of negotiation or sequence i guess of uh, events yeah happen. and depending on the complexity of what it is you're trying to do and and how far away that thing is from the cpu mm -hmm. um you have to consume more cycles to to do it you know sometimes it's it's a simple thing like this two cycle count sometimes it's more because you know you're doing something like loading loading data from an address that's outside of the zero page um you can see this this is uh that store x is uh using four cycles um to do this store and you know again my best guess is it's like three of those three of those cycles well, let's see. So one cycle is maybe to decode the instruction. The second cycle is to set up the the you know low part of the address. The third one is the, to set up the high part of the address, and then the final one is to actually take the value of x and push that into the memory bus for that for that RAM or so. You know, I'm I'm making that up, but you know that's that's the kind of low level thing we're talking about, and and why it matters is because of what I was saying before, where in the NMI, you only have so many of those cycles before the screen starts drawing again. Now, now where did you get 2000 from? How do you know that that's a good or bad number overall? Is that there, based on CPU speed? Yeah, so, so there was... Um, Isn't it like 1.5 megahertz or something like that? It's 1.78, I think, is what i remember um it really comes down to um i have to think about what it was but there's some sort of the, the calculation i was doing and then confirmed later um through some posts on nest dev was if you if you divide up the cycles that you have um on the, the number of cycles on the CPU that you have and the timing for 60 frames per second and how long you have between frames as a result of the t differences in the timing between the two, then you can determine how many cycles. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 2,700 cycles actually. Um, okay. But you can figure out, okay, the, there are this many C CPU cycles left um, before the next frame has to start to get drawn in order for there to be a constant 60 frames per second. And that's the other thing. And this is not, um, this, you, you don't have any ability to control the PPU and tell it not to draw at that frame rate. Um, it will always try to draw at 60 frames per second. Um, if you can't run at that rate, it's up to you to make sure that you keep things in a state that's consistent enough that you can run at a slower frame rate internally than the PPU is actually trying to update, um, which is different from um, PC games where you're rendering the frame buffer 
um, where you're actually doing stuff where you're drawing what's going to show up on screen next in you know in the gpu or in in your memory and then once it's done then you display it on the screen um those are a little bit more forgiving because basically until you wipe what's on the screen with your next frame it'll persist and the ppu has inherent issues where things like sprites mm -hmm. uh, sprites don't persist so you've got to update your sprites every cycle or they will disappear after one. Um, so, you, so even if you're saying, well, I, I'm going to run at 30 frames per second because I can't, I'm doing too much stuff and my code is too complex, you still have to be updating your sprites at 60 frames per second because you need to be able to have them continue to display on screen. You don't want them disappearing every other frame. That makes sense. Because I remember you talking about that in one of the videos. You, you basically uh, called it... Uh... I can't remember the phrase you used, but it was very perfect description. It, I think you called it uh, degrading or it's decay. Yeah, decay. That's what it was. Decay. Yeah. Yeah, decay. Yeah. So if you don't persistently update, uh, it's gone. The next frame. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, I don't know how much easier the second problem is going to be, or if you want to dive into it, or where you want to go from here but well uh, so yeah the only thing i want to talk about is so we're gonna if you um to make this easier on both of us with uh debugging this what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a break point right after this on that load a line so if you click to the left of the c019 oh sorry <clears throat> left click or right click I didn't uh, left click should turn it on maybe okay. maybe do it all the way to the left we're like in line with the arrow yeah, there you go. Okay. So, and then if you press F5, it'll continue to run to that breakpoint. Yep. So you can see if you look at the cycle count, it went oh. through a lot of cycles. Wow. <laughs> now, part of that is because it's simulating the the PPU in the way that it it has to. It takes time to initialize, and that's why that's why in uh, the Nerdy Nights tutorials and all the other ones, they talk about how you need to make sure to wait for a couple of um, uh, screen blanks before you start doing anything with the PPU. Uh, it's because for that, yeah. It's because it's not ready at power on for you to do anything yet. Yeah, I do remember that because there's the first one. Mm -hmm. and when I went through it, they're like, nah, you got to put another one after you clear out the memory. Yep. Put in another one. And I just called it V-Blank 2. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do remember that. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. So the only other thing I wanted to touch on is if you go back to the debugger for a second and step sure. through. Sure. So F10. Yep. Um, let's go all the way to the bottom of that loop. So just keep going. Uh, slow down a little bit. Okay, yeah, so... Oh, and it's actually doing that here. So you you oh, go ahead and uh, get to the point where you do the INX, but don't actually execute it. So you'll, you'll notice here that we're doing INX, but then we're doing a branch if not equal without mm -hmm. any comparison. Mm -hmm. And you have in your code where you're loading the backgrounds, you're doing an IN, IN Y, and then you're doing com, uh, compare Y zero, and then you're doing branch not equal to go back. Mm -hmm. so that that compare y zero is actually redundant because if you increment x and it becomes zero uh the zero flag is automatically set and the and I, this is why i'm saying you may choose to ignore this but um the the way that the uh, branch of equal or not equal works is that basically not equal <laughs> not equal is um triggered if the z or, or let me start that sentence again um, a branch will occur when you do branch is not equal if the zero flag is not set and you can see it says right there if the zero flag is clear jump to the location specified mm -hmm. so why that's important is because you can do the increment x until it becomes zero which would mean then branch if not equal would actually fail to branch at that point because it 
the zero flag will be set to zero and it will be essentially the same as you doing a compare of any number against any other number. Um, and the reason for that is because a comparison in the CPU is essentially just a subtract. So if the two numbers are equal, the result is zero, which means the zero flag is set. It's the same for the CPU. It's a logical equivalence. Again, like I said, it's one of those things where you might just say, man, that's just, I'm never going to remember that. And I I'm <laughs> gonna compare it because I'm going to keep forgetting why I did it that way. But I did want to kind of point that out. No, that's good because, uh, like you said, I do like to deep dive and knowing things like that can help make code efficient. If I know that incrementing X is also going to affect the zero flag and you know, the branch, if not equal, is looking at the zero flag mm -hmm. and, you know, that, that that can, you know, either change or not, you know, how I code in the future, but at least knowing that it has that effect, because I've honestly not dove into the status flags too much. Mm -hmm. I, I read a little bit about them um, on NESDEV and just kind of nodded and said, okay, that's nice. <laughs> when it... <laughs> When it finally matters, I'll read this more, but okay, you know, I think the reason it didn't become too apparently important at first was there's no direct method, at least that I'm aware of, where I'm not, it's not like I'm loading into the A register or storing this value, you know, uh, from the A register or et cetera incrementing the X register, you know, it's uh, our memory address. There's no direct flag manipulation. Th those are just inherently affected in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm querying for a particular or setting a particular flag. Uh, the branch if not equal looks at those flags, but I'm not, right. I'm not incrementing X solely for the purpose of affecting that flag i'm doing something to x and the effect is z flag is affected does that, does that make sense yeah it does but i would i would also warn that there is though the the potential pitfall there where you then because you don't know how those flags are affected will introduce bugs by doing things like you'll compare a value against a for example Mm -hmm. And then you'll do an instruction immediately after that before you do your evaluation of if you need to branch or not. Mm -hmm. and as a result of that instruction in between, affect the flags unknowingly. And so then you'll branch incorrectly some of the time. Right. Oh, no, that, that absolutely makes sense. It, it was more of a, I'm not quite there yet. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a complete uh, shrug off of never going to care, never going to look. It was more just, well, I was thirsty and that's Niagara Falls. I'm just going to go to the water fountain for now and I'll, I'll be good. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, good, good to know. Uh, I'm definitely becoming more familiar with the flags. And what I really like about this as we're going through this, these debuggers, I mean, I can roll over STA and I can see that no flags are affected. That, that's mm -hmm. awesome. LDA. Oh, cool. Two flags are affected. So th just the debugger in Mesin, being able to immediately see what flags, what is this one? Bit. Okay. So bit is affecting three flags. So it's a, a greedy hog. It, it likes to affect <laughs> a bunch of things. Yeah. So it, it's messy and it, it, it throws a grenade into everything. That's wonderful. So I'm probably never going to use that. I'm not just kidding. <laughs> but but uh, just being able to quickly assess what flags are affected, mm -hmm. you know, that, that helps. Because now when I go back to debug something, you know, uh, I can create the breakpoint, step through this, and kind of roll over and say, wait a minute. Um, I affected Z and N flag up here. Um, down here, I'm also affecting the Z and N flag. But, you know, it just, you know, it kind of sets it up for an easier... You're giving me more tools in my toolbox, bag, yeah. basically. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that no, that's really good. I I like that. So I don't understand the flags, but I can see them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. No. It and and like you were saying, I know you're you're still working on learning all of this stuff. So um, I don't expect you to know, you know, like have this memorized. But it's um, I'm I'm just 
passing along things where I've screwed myself because I've done exactly that thing, not thinking about it because it's like, oh, well, I need to do this. Oh, and then I need to do that. And then I'll do that thing. And it's like, oh, well, by doing that one extra step in between, uh, that innocuous little thing that you did ended up breaking your logic randomly because depending on what the, the outcome of that little one step was, you mm-hmm. you sometimes don't behave properly, and those things can be uh, tough to to spot. So oh, that's um, uh, I like it a lot. I'm grinning from ear to ear. Everyone else, if anybody else is watching right now, they're probably like, "What is going on? I don't understand." Well, this is supposed to be debugging one on one. What are you guys doing? Look. <laughs> Looking at this stuff. Well, this is—I mean, when you're this low level, this is 101. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you said it best. This, this is 101. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, do you want to look at that other problem? Sure. Um, I'm actually uh, feeling like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> like I'm kind of <laughs> setting you up for a little bit of a stumper. This is uh, only because the code that was given to me. Mm-hmm. How, how do you exit? Just uh, double click the little bug icon on the top left. Bug icon. Oh, this one? Yep. Oh, that was easy. Okay. Um, only because I initially, when I looked at this um, and started going through the Bunny Boy uh, uh, Nerdy Nights, I keep mm-hmm. calling it Bunny Boy. I mean, he's the one that wrote it, but I keep forgetting to say Nerdy Nights. But and nonetheless, uh, when he did the tutorials, where are my controls? There it is. So I have a jump, you know, subroutine here, mm-hmm. uh, read controllers. Uh, and then I move my ship around. Mm-hmm. So uh, one of the cool things about when you played combat as a kid is you could move in 360 degrees. Right. That, <laughs> man, I was, I was stumped. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I could move the ship, uh, you know, left and right, up and down, because that was just mm-hmm. very very simple to me i was incrementing either the x or the y position yep. there is no attribute for diagonal <laughs> so nope. i was like oh gosh how do i how do i do this and i was like well first i need to be able to turn the ship so that it can face those different directions right mm-hmm. yep so the first thing i did was i, I drew i'm gonna open up yy chart so i had cardinal directions you know up mm-hmm. and down left and right and then I made diagonals, and mm-hmm. with the uh, attributes, I could flip this horizontally and vertically and get all eight directions. Yep. And I said, well, I kind of need like an in-between that and the other one. So I made these two uh, for the left. This is for the left and right, which is technically like 2 o'clock, I guess. Mm-hmm. And flipping these around, I can get the others to make a total of 16. So that's mm-hmm. kind of where I'm at. So I was like, okay. Because I wanted it to kind of be smooth when I did figure out how to turn it. Mm -hmm. And so my right and left don't move the ship. They kind of cycle through the tiles to make it simulate a spin. Right. Okay. So I kind of got stuck. Um, Ignore this. I'm I'm also learning game states so that I can move from title screen to (laughs) playing and such. So that's not being implemented. So... Uh, so we'll go down to move ship. Mm-hmm. Um, I have probably efficiency issues everywhere, so you can chuckle later uh, when I'm not listening or muted. Okay, but... <laughs> that's not not important. Yeah. So uh, here's my move ship, which I am taking zero credit for. I actually had to have Kevin sit here and explain this to me about 30 times. The poor guy was so <laughs> patient. Uh, if you're listening, Kevin, thank you so much. Um, he sat here and explained this to me. Uh, multiple times and I can actually understand it now I can move through it I can talk about any section of the code I understand it mm-hmm. and I can actually you know take away and move uh, you know pieces of it and understand what you know if I need to debug I'll go, okay I'm gonna comment this out because I want to test to see which direction is you know stuck and etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically what's going on though is uh, I'm looking at all the buttons and anding them to see uh, if the user is pushing right or left, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, If he's pushing left, we go through this section. If we're pushing right, uh, I do a quick test, and then we go through this section here. And what's causing the issue is the timer. And basically what the timer is doing is it's it's a byte, and Mm -hmm. it's set at zero, and I'm just incrementing it here. 
loading it into A, and I'm going to compare it to ship rotation speed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if it's, you know, and then I'll do a BCC and go to the end if it's less than that, because I don't want the ship to turn every single frame because it spins way too fast. Okay. So it's basically like, don't, don't actually rotate the ship until you've accumulated enough movement timers. Yep. So, and that's, uh, I'll go to the top real quick and show you that. So the movement timer, uh, oh, not too far. So the movement timer right now, uh, I just said it is one. So they both uh, start at one and mm -hmm. the ship rotation speed is three, which is basically the number of frames I want to pass by mm -hmm. before that compare is met. Yep. Pretty straightforward. Yep. Um, and kind of ingenious too. Um, yeah, I thought that was kind of slick. I was like, oh, so that's how you kind of slow down code. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. You do a compare in BCC if it's okay. So anyway, um, so we do compare. And then um, this part is where I, I really needed Kevin's help too. I was like, I don't understand this piece. But uh, basically what it's doing is it's then decrementing the ship direction and loading that uh, into the A register. Uh, and then doing a compare to see if the ship direction had wrapped around so that you can have a continuous flow of the tiles as they cycle through. And uh, if so, then it'll, you know, go down to the rotate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it'll jump down there if it hasn't wrapped around. Otherwise, mm -hmm. um, you know, it has. And so, you know, we'll go to the last value, uh, which he had to explain to me. I, I didn't understand why he was doing this, uh, you know, uh, value versus, you know, 1F. So I put my notes here to kind of help me out. Um, so he loads that into the register and then, you know, stores that in the ship direction and then he'll jump to rotate. So either way you go down to rotate, but it just, it's to determine whether or not you've wrapped around that. That's kind of the key. Uh, that way it looks smooth. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, let's take a look at ship lookup table. Sure. Uh, that one I kind of, Built off of his um, initial one that he gave. Oh, that's the other way. Sorry if I'm scrolling too fast. It's uh, no, it's, it's okay. It's catching up. Okay. Yeah, there it is. So I defined this as a set of data bytes uh, with only two values, uh, which is very crazy to me because I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know you could make lookup tables. Mm -hmm. So Kevin's like, well, if you make a lookup table. Uh, and then he showed me how to look up the second value as well. How do you look up the second value of the first row? Like, how do you index it? You know, so mm -hmm. that was, um, so anyway, um, so I just put my little notes here. This is the ship at 12 o'clock. This is it at one and one thirty. you know, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And, and these are basically just the tiles. And then with the, you know, horizontal or vertical attributes flipped, that's what will actually, uh, show up. Right. So what what tripped me up was when he was comparing if you remember before the rotate the one e and one f and he got that by the total number of data bytes uh -huh. uh, here i was like oh because when i looked at yy charm like uh nope it's zero four buddy there's uh -huh. no one one e okay so i don't know what you're doing over here and he's like no 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 it's not your tiles that's the total number of values in your lookup table it's like right. oh gotcha so uh, you know so so the the issue is not so much the lookup table it works the ship will spin and i'll, and I'll show you that in a second mm -hmm. the issue is let me see if i is there an easy way to just say go to the top <laughs> uh control home let me see that well i'm already home so it doesn't matter but i to try it anyway oh cool I need shortcuts like that. that those, those are the time savers, you know, three seconds here, three mm -hmm. seconds there. Of course I went too far. Uh, so ship rotation speed. If I change this to four, which mm -hmm. means it won't branch to the rotate unless the ship rotation speed is incremented to four, which is frame by frame. So it won't rotate until the fourth frame. So the human eye says, oh, look, I'm turning instead of spinning out of ludicrous speed control. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, so if I change it to four, it, it rotates so slow. It's extremely different from three. Let's so take I'm a look at both of those. I want to see that. Sure. So, uh, I'll leave it at, well, yeah, I'll leave it at three mm -hmm. and 
I'm probably going to have controller issues. I didn't even think to. Oh boy. <laughs> well, it's all right. You can you can uh, initialize the controller and mess in if you need to. Okay. And I'm going to do a fancy little control T trick that you showed me as well. All these fancy tricks that Mike's showing me. <laughs> Coming up to speed. I'm catching you. <laughs> Mike's like, yeah. No, good luck catching me. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm having controller issues. It's not, uh, eh, it's not. Go to options and input. And input. And then set up on the right for player one. Okay, and I'll just use my, uh, let's see, I'll use this one. Actually, I don't even need up and down. I just need left and right. That's all I'm detecting. Okay, left and right. Okay. And just okay? Um, do you need A, B, start to get past the menu? or what? Not unless you uh, have another six hours of uh, video time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so <laughs> you're just rotating the sprite as yeah, it is on the screen, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Got I'm it. I'm not moving the ship in the got direction it, it's got facing, it, got it. which I'm sure is going to be fun. <laughs> that is, uh, that will be a little interesting. Yeah, because they did it in Asteroids, Dick Gummit, so it's got to be easy. <laughs> well, there are ways to make it easy, but um, it's, again, it's it's easy, but not simple. Right. Easy, but not simple. Like this whole lookup table thing, which mm -hmm. drove me insane. Uh, so, Control T. All right. So, now I should be able to, that's interesting. I'm not spinning at all. So, maybe I didn't have a controller issue. I don't have input. Hmm. Okay. That's uh, unexpected. So am I not reading in inputs anymore? Where's my jump to controllers? There's my read controllers, which uh, are basically Bunny Boy's uh, tutorials. Mm -hmm. Where's the jump? There it is. Okay. So actually, this is a perfect debugging <laughs> We're yeah. trying to debug it. It's perfect. So in my mind, I would revert right to my C sharp and go, okay, print, you know, I got here. I want to see that I actually got here. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what I would do in C sharp, just to make sure that I'm not exiting out before I even get here. But that's not yeah. how you do it in assembly. So Yep. So let's go to um let's go to Messin and let's look at the um the debugger. So just um go to uh, debug and then open the debugger. And where are you storing the value of the um, controller reads? Um, I have a gamepad option. Um, let me double check to make sure that that's what I was doing. But I think it's gamepad. Um, or sorry, buttons. Yeah, buttons one. And then I think buttons two. Yeah. So, okay. Oh wait, control home. Look at that. Look at that. He can be taught. <laughs> so in uh, in your debugger uh, in Messin, let's go back to um, the bottom there. Let's see if it'll let us um, type it in by name. I don't think it will because I don't think you have the debugger information loaded. Um, so on the bottom where it says watch there. Okay. You want to see if I can do buttons? Yeah, type buttons one, and let's see if it's... Yeah, it doesn't know what that is. Um, is there we can a way... tell what, what byte it is, though, right? Yeah. If... Be... I can just count the bytes. I mean, it's kind of tedious. Actually, no, it's not too bad. Game state, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's bytes nine and ten. Okay, so, so... what we'll do is go back to the watch and um type in 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 square brackets type in nine Let's see if that i think zero that'll... nine or yeah, nine? it doesn't matter okay. okay cool so that's saying the value of that is zero and the same thing with uh well a no oh no. that's right it wraps <laughs> no, it's, it's it's hex so you're you're saying 16 right now yeah zero a yeah is the right one Oh wait! Oh, is it not? What is this format exception? Oh, is it? Is it actually using decimal? All right, so click OK. You can just make okay. it uh, make it ten. I I stand corrected. Wow! No, I thought I 
thought you were right, actually. I was like, wait a minute. Um, uh, try, delete. F, try, try F2. Nope, no, no that's it's, We broke it. Um, can you right-click on it? No, nope, right-click nope. does that. All right, just close Benson and restart it. Okay. <laughs> we found a bug. Uh, was it Shiru? Sour. It sour. Sour, yeah. yeah. Sour, you got a little work to do, buddy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, let's see you make one better. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Oh, it's still there. See if you can get rid of it now, now that we closed it and reopened it. Okay. Oh, shoot. No. Um, what if you Delete. double click the watch area there on the left where it says name? Double double click uh, it where mm -hmm. you have the zero A. Sorry. Ah, yeah, there. okay, cool. Oh, man, I tried to backspace. It didn't let me do that. Um, that uh, back oh, back. it's just going to do it every time you type that. That's all right. There we go. <laughs> all right. So do it. Do what you had before with uh, the bracket one zero. Phew. There we go. Okay. So bracket one zero. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that That's... was hex, but all right. That's... Maybe you have to do. Um, hmm. Can you? Oh, just leave it. It's fine. So oh. um, hit F five. Okay. And um, now right press down. the control key keys down on. You know your left arrow and stuff. Hey, what do you want me to do? I'm a little control oh, T. well, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about this. This isn't going to update over here. Um, close close the debugger. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sure. No, 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 no. I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, click on good. debug. Okay. And click on memory tools. Okay. <clears throat> so it's all right. So there's it's uh our ninth and tenth byte. Let me double check because actually I think. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nine and ten. So it's five. it's actually eight and nine because you start at zero. Oh, that's right. Oh, good. Oh my gosh. So yes. I mean, we would have down. seen it eventually that it was updating a different byte. But let, let's um, go, um, try and press the controller keys uh, while you have the main Messen window in focus, the actual emulator uh, part of it. Gotcha. You're just gonna have to scoot that out of the way. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So. So now start pressing the keys and see if you see those bytes update or not. No, I don't. Oh, I did have it set to my um, gamepad. Um, I reset it to my keyboard. No, keyboard's not updating eight or nine either. Go to go to your options again. Let's double check the input. Oops, I clicked it. Functions input. Oh, go it's to back to. That, that's fine. I just want to see. Left arrow, right arrow. Yeah, so those are all what you would put in there. Um, hmm. That is weird. Two, click nine. on clear key bindings on the bottom left. Let's just reset that. Sure. Okay, so just, um, yeah, reset those. Left arrow. Let's set this one to the right arrow. And that's all I need for now. That's all I'm reading, so... <clears throat> Okay. Unless you want to set the rest, but that nah, doesn't matter okay. if that's all you're reading right now. Just don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> we do another debugging session. Mike, what'd you do? <laughs> nothing works. All right. So try using your left and right here. Uh, nothing. And I have the window, I think, in focus. I'm clicked into it. So. Okay. So then let's go back to your code and let's look at what it's doing. Wait. The... Is it because we. Oh, never mind. Okay, I thought we had it still at breakpoint or something. Never mind. No, right. it wouldn't. It, it's it's definitely running. Um, let's mm -hmm. yeah, let's go to your controller code where it's reading the controller. Let's take a look at what it's doing. Okay. Let's see, that is. Uh, I'm trying to scroll too fast to give you um, seizures here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here's read controller one. Um, read controller one loop, read controller two. Actually, you know what? I think I see the problem already. Because in my code above the move ships, right here. Oh no, it's spelled the same. Okay, I thought maybe I called it something else. Where are you doing your loop back to? actually call the read controller code. Let's see. 
return to interrupt right here. Uh, is that so you're reading it in oh you're reading it in the nmi okay uh, i don't know that's probably not good but no no it's fine i just i i wasn't it didn't look like you were looping um at all so that's why i was oh, asking that right okay so there's read controller so one. you are doing the read um let's go back to your so read controller so you're latching 4016 and then you're mm -hmm. Okay, and then, <clears throat> and then you're reading 4016. So load A with that logical shift right. What is, is LSR? Right? What is LSR A? You sh it's just LSR. Unless it's different in Nessasm. I think it's just LSR because that true. only works on the register A. Unless... Okay. I mean, it might be different in Nessasm, and, and then that's why it needs that. Sure. Let me uh, double check, too, and make sure that um, 30, 30 nights. Because so, I think I got this from, uh, from Bunny Boy. Uh, I think it was. No, Bunny okay. Boy. Yeah, he, he's doing LSRA also, although I don't, don't know why it needs that since. But okay. All right. So no, that's that's what he's doing as well. So you're you're okay. good. Um so LSRA and then rotate left to buttons one LSR rotate left decrement branch if not equal return subroutine. And I do have this for 4016, I think, which is controller one, and then mm -hmm. 4017 for controller two. Um it used to work before I put in the banks. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Yeah. Um, let's do this. Go to the debugger. Sure. And um, let's let's Oops. close the memory uh, the memory tool, and then okay. um, it, if you do Control D, it'll bring up the debugger window with the code. Ah. And let's and let's find the area where you're doing your. Um, your latch on 4016. So, um, can I search for 4016? No, because it's not loading your code. It's loading the raw assembly. So, um, gotcha. let's see. Go back to your code Scroll. for a second. Oh, wait. I just happened to roll over it, I think. Is that it? Control 16. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Talk about luck. Yeah. <laughs> I literally good. rolled the mouse over. All right, so hit a set a breakpoint on that. Uh, right here. Yep. Oops. And then um, go back to the game. Or sorry, hit F five and then go back to the game. F five. Okay, so it is calling this. So that's good. Um. So it's not getting skipped over. So that means the JSR read controller one is working. Well, it means it's being called at least or being least. called okay. yeah so so um step through that until you get to the rts all the way through yeah just keep stepping through you'll you're going to loop through that eight times which is oh, fine that's right because there's eight um inputs i'm not counting so i'm going a little slow here i think that's four or five well i also see it saying that Buttons one is actually at seven. Uh, press uh, Control M. Bit so it's set, so it's show. it's seven and eight are are bytes for the controller. It looks like, which is why they're red. They're they're updated. Mm -hmm. So all right, go back to the debugger. Seven and eight. Can I pause you for a minute then? And sure. Ask a question. Yeah. I thought. Well, Let's go back up to the top. Let's let's yeah. recount. So, game state is one byte. Pointer yeah. low and high is two. Are two? It's a total of two bytes there. So that's three. Okay. Movement timer is four. Movement timer two is five. Shift direction is six. Shift direction um, two is seven. Oh, this is not a byte. This is a right. constant. Right. Ah. Uh, yep. It's seven and eight. So my debugger is actually off here on my watch values too. Yes. Okay. Um, I can change those. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt because we want to look at those. 
<clears throat> I am learning. This is good. <laughs> Mike's like, yeah, well, you should have seen the problem. <laughs> no, 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 no. There we um, go. All right, cool. So the good news is that clears up that, but now um, hit uh, step out of that by pressing F10. It's going to jump us back to the next instruction. Okay, so that's the controller. Yeah, yeah, control that's two. controller two. So go ahead and step into that. Oops. Oh, you know what? It, it just stepped over it. It's okay. Um, let's go to oh, the. Oh, I didn't have a break point. That's why. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and then the next two JSRs should be the two ship movements that come right after the uh, controllers. So yeah. Yeah, it should be right up here. Yeah, there's the next two JSRs here. So, all right. So um, press F5 on the debug window again to, to run. We're going to hit the breakpoint. Disable that breakpoint by just clicking on it again. And then press F5 to run the code again. And bring up that memory... Um, that memory uh, tools, and then bring up the emulator window itself. Emulator window. Yeah, the, wow. the actual image of the game running. Yep. Um, and then press press your keys again. Left and right. I'll try both controllers too. I think I said it to the keyboard. Yeah, I did set it to the keyboard. And I'm not getting anything. That's so weird. It took the input when we set it after clearing. Huh. So let me just let me look over this code um, sure. that Bunny yeah. Boy wrote here because it's been a little while since I've read the controller. So he's loading. Um, yeah, if you can jump to your read controller one, let's. I want to take a look at that. No problem. Let's see, there it is. Okay. Yep. So um, you're loading X with one. Um, you're storing that into forty sixteen, and then you're making it zero and you're starting at 416 and then logical shift right rotate left scroll down this to here there we go i get both of them in there decrement hmm is it uh check out okay with what he had yeah i let me um Bring up my code here. And I still haven't switched over to CC. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know if I will. Anytime. The only the only thing that that would facilitate right now is being able to use the variables directly, um, which it's not really that big a deal. Um, so I am. Rotate. Oh, you know what it is, I think? Hold on. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, 6502 op codes. Let me double check this because I... Okay, you're doing... I can't see your code because I might, my code's in the way. Um, you're doing LSR. Mm-hmm. Um, so LSR shifts all bits right one uh, one position zero shifted into bit seven and the original bit zero zero is shifted into bit seven and the original bit zero wait what oh right okay zero is shifted into bit seven and the original zero is shifted into carry and then you're doing a rotate right which takes carry is shifted. Uh, oh, you're doing rotate left. Sorry, carry is shifted into bit zero. Um, okay, well, one thing, okay, yeah, so one thing, mm, actually, I take that back. Where are you doing the initialization of the value of buttons one? You know, I asked, um, uh, a couple of the folks, oops. 
asked a couple of the folks in Discord, and it was explained to me that the initialization... Why does it keep going back to this? I'm trying to scroll up. That the initialization of the values is actually happening during the zero out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Out. But are you, are you doing anything else with those um, variables other than looking at the bits? Let's see. I could do a search real quick. I mean... To my knowledge, no. I would say buttons one and two are not used anywhere, but I'll, I'll highlight it real quick, see okay. if it's anywhere else in the code. But um, I did have an offset before, so <laughs> who knows? Okay, it's highlighted here. That's just a comment. Mm -hmm. It says button ones. Well, okay, and so that makes sense that you're doing that here because you're looking yeah. at buttons, the buttons to see if you need to do the actual movement. Um, mm -hmm. So that's fine. Um, because I'm testing the last uh, to see if left is on mm -hmm. or if right is on here. Um, oops, I unhighlighted button one. So I did that. Let me do that again. Okay, so um, ever onward down. I don't see any other highlights. There's one. Right, and that's where you're actually reading the controller. Reading the controller, and nope, that's. I it. wonder. Oops. Go go back to your code here for a second. Um, Which piece? The, the what you have right now open. Okay. Um, um, you're loading X with that. Load A. <clears throat> Modular shift right. Aha. I know what the problem is. Remember how I said you have to know how the flags work? Because if you don't, you might do something that impacts. <laughs> uh oh. The... <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Oh, actually, you know what? No, I'm sorry. That's not. Oh! Damn. All right. That wasn't it. Hmm. Uh, that was just, I was misreading that. Never mind. Damn it. Um, I thought you were, you were looping too many times and shifting the bits off the, off the buttons one. Um, yeah, I started it at eight on each one for my index, but um, do decrementing here. Do so. this just to um, sure. uh, just to uh, satisfy my my need for it matching exactly. Load sure. X with zero instead of doing the decrement um, at the top. Um, okay. And. So, so, um, started off at, zero at re controller, here. no, oh, sorry, at re controller oh, one, mm -hmm. um, you have the load X and then you're, um, well, the other thing is you're also doing it with X instead of A. Do you, let's, let's do a few things. Let's change it exactly to match and then we'll figure out why, if it works, that's important. So change, change it to load A with one. Okay. And then store that into 4016. And then load A with zero instead of doing a decrement. I'm sorry. Uh, so re, re, change that DEX to LDA and then zero um, dollar zero zero. Or sorry. Oh, wait a minute. I know what the problem is. This is okay. <laughs> <laughs> good because right. I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, undo those changes. I know what the problem is. I know what okay. the problem is. All right, let's go back. So we're doing back to storing it into. Oops, I could tie. Oh, I have caps lock on. Okay. Like, yeah, and then get rid of the LD. Yep, and then uh, you just um, uh, in between there, you need a DEX to yeah, decrement like, it. All right. So um, the dollar zero one, you need to make that pound dollar zero one because you're not loading one oh, value. You're loading the address. Gosh. The value of the address. Um, and you got to do that in read controller too. Oh my gosh. Uh, talk about noob. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times where the same thing. I'm sitting there going, I don't understand what the problem is. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this should be working. And then it's like, oh, I'm not saying load the value, whatever. I'm saying load the value at the address. Address dollar zero one. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, be, that should fix it. Oh my goodness! That is a um, that is yeah. faux pas. That you're probably doing, you know, a store of zero and then another store of zero. So you're not latching the controller to actually um, to actually read the bits out properly. 
close this and close the debugger. That's the only thing with debugging in Messen is that uh, mm -hmm. I find that I just end up with too many windows open. But <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, just re rebuild the rebuild the ROM and then Control T, and you should be good to go. Oh, Mike, you sucked up another two bytes. My goodness. It's oh, on. it's all right. <laughs> all right. Oh, wait. I don't need to do that. Okay. Uh, control D? T. Oh, T, like Tango. Gotcha. Okay. And then let me set up. Well, it should be. Oh, there it goes. So now we're spinning. Okay. So left, right. Okay. But it works. Uh, just for my own sanity, I wanted to make sure my controllers work too, if you don't yep. mind. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's do a quick setup. Clear out the bindings and let me make sure this thing is good to go. All right, let's try it. So up, not registering. Let me try the other one. I have two plugged in, so I'm assuming that one is just being upset at the other. Yep, okay, so it thinks that this is Joypad 2. That's fine. Uh, let's just do left and right. Okay. Okay, so we'll say okay. Uh, player 2 seems upset now. Oh, you got to clear the bindings on that one. There it go. was already set up. There All right, go. so that should be good now. Okay, so now my controller works. So there's left and right. And it spins uh, relatively quick, but I'm I'm a. I want it to be a little bit slower. So well, I'm. I I don't know if it's because we're we're on the hangout or what, but it's not. It's not looking smooth to me. Oh, Can, it's super smooth on mine. It, it might be. You, a it, yeah, you know, it. Um, if you press the minus um button a few or sorry, the minus key on the keyboard a few times, it'll slow down the emulator. Um, you'll see it'll say the speed oh. and then. Seven and now eight. try it. Let's see. Let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, it is much better now. I think it's it's just the streaming that was the issue. Okay, um, it seems there's like a little there. jump at the end, but uh, that might also be a streaming artifact. But okay. Oh, um, if that? you press, yeah, no, no, it, it's it's uh, it looks it looks much better than what I was seeing initially. So, <laughs> um, all right. So now you're saying if you change the the counter to four it goes bananas right so in the movement here um when i'm doing the compare of there it is when i'm doing the compare of what's in the a register to ship rotation speed and it mm -hmm. um if it's less than it goes to ship or, you know uh, mm -hmm. if it's less than it keeps going otherwise it goes to the end um uh, and decrements the ship rotation mm -hmm. etc the problem is it goes way too slow. So I'm not, there's, because this is non-decimal, mm -hmm. I guess is the best way to put it. I can't really say, well, I want 3.5. Right. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Right. So I said, well, I'll go for four. So I'll show you what that looks like. Right. Now, keep in mind that that should mean that if you're... If you're doing it every four frames at 60 frames per second, that you're rotating 15 times a second, or, or that you're changing the direction at 15 times a second, mm -hmm. um, and then however many directions you have, what did you say? You have like eight different directions? Uh, my lookup table is here. Oh, it's 16, uh, right? 16, I believe. So then you should be doing one full rotation a second, basically. Yeah, it's 16. I was just double checking. So, okay. So, there's a little math involved here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, let's look at it at four. And I think that's what yep. threw me off when I was looking at the controllers, too. Mm -hmm. I think I know what happened is up here, I type dollar zero four, even right. though it's a value, not a memory mm -hmm. address. Mm -hmm. And then down there, I type in pound to get the absolute decimal value dollar zero four to be four. But you don't need the pound sign when you're declaring constants, which is kind of odd to me. Yeah, agreed. It's it's a little counterintuitive. Uh, so that's saved off. I'll rebuild it or reassemble. And we'll look at the, this is control T, you said. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I'm at 15 frames a second. 
And so that's what I would want at 60 frames a second. Well, so, okay. So go back to, um, go to, what is it? Uh, options, maybe the options menu and um, speed. Oh, well, you don't need to go to normal. Oh, I see. And then, and then do that. And what does it do? Move it. It's actually still super fast. That's odd. So, we'll go to the debugger. Mike, it made a liar out of me. Normally, when it's four, it's really slow. Hmm. Well, I'm wondering if there was something else going on at the time, potentially. Um, but let's go to the debugger. Let's go to um, let's do a search for compare um, space. If you just type, uh, I think Control F will let you search. Let me put the controller down real quick. Control F. Okay. And then and... say compare space. And then we just want to look for the actual compare that is relevant here. So it, um, not this. Keep going. How do you say next? But just uh, yeah. F3. Yep. Okay. Not this section. Here we go. So this yeah, this would be it. Um, so we're saying okay. So increment the address at three. Load the address at three. I can look at my put a breakpoint there. I want to. I want to see. Sure. I want to see what it's doing. Yeah. Oh, and, but, <clears throat> uh, okay. Yeah, actually, that should work because it'll it only hit that breakpoint if the if it detects the key is pressed uh, on the controller, uh, the the button. I mean, so press F five to run the game again. Yeah. Oh, get rid of that. Point. Get rid of that breakpoint. Yeah, was like, what was this from? Yeah, just okay. So now go back to um, the game window and then press one of the controller buttons. All right, let me grab it again. There we go. All right, I hit okay. left. Okay, so it uh, incremented the address at three, and now it's going to load it. So press F10 to load that value, and now it's comparing it against four. Okay, go yeah, go ahead, and then it's going to check carry a set, and so four is greater than that value, so carry is clear, which means it's going to jump over to wherever C one three D is. So go go to your code. Let's look at that so we can sure. actually see the labels and stuff. I get what you're doing. I'm slowly <laughs> getting what you're doing. <laughs> This is really good, Mike. I, I really appreciate this. This is because um, it's not so much getting it to work. I mean, that is the goal, but it's it's knowing how to debug in mm -hmm. general. That's that I'm really, you know, soaking in here. So, uh, so there's the compare. The BCC is what we're looking at now. So, what is dot end? Where is that? Oh, okay. So that's a little bit further down. So it's after the try right. So you're basically in a non-labeled try left. So try mm -hmm. left, try right, rotate, and then end. So it just returns. So basically don't do nothing because you haven't quite met the criteria to do anything. Okay. It didn't um, rotate. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm looking at what you've got here. Um, scroll up a little bit so you can see more of the... So, okay, so, so when you, okay, you change the direction and then you jump to rotate and for right you fall uh branch of not equal okay um so that sorry we're just kind of thinking through how load y ship direction store a ship direction there so okay so in wait, theory wait. mike i see something what's that I see something that's catching my eye. So up here in ship direction, I'm doing a comparison to the value FE. Mm -hmm. And 
based on that to see if it's wrapped around the table because I have 16 values, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Why am I not doing the same comparison when I'm moving to the right? Well, because you're incrementing. So um, you're going to hit the right bounds of the of the table, which mm -hmm. only has the, what is it, 18 values? Or it's got, no, it's got... Um, 16 so it's got 16, 16 by, by two bytes. So 32. Yeah. So it's two zero. So that's 32. So if you hit 32, you're, you're out of bounds of your table. Um, because you've done two increments 16 times. And at that point you need to wrap around back to zero. Um, the one e val uh, sorry the f e value is you're at zero and you subtract two so you go from zero to f f and then f f to f e but f e doesn't have a, a valid value in the offset of your table right mm -hmm. so think about it like a like a string of length thirty two right if you tried to index into it at uh, two fifty four there's nothing there so what you need to do is clamp that value down to a value that fits within the the actual length of the string. So if if you had um, you, you want to go back two bytes from the end, which is why we're checking. Okay, is it FE? Yes, that means we had zero and we subtracted two. So the the actual end of our table is at one e. Oh, wait a minute. That, Which that... actually, is it 1E? Yeah, it is 1E. Um, it, so mm -hmm. Here's why. You just made, ah, I get it. Because the reason we were subtracting two, I remember now, is because I put two values mm -hmm. per direction. Yep. That's why we were subtracting two. I was like, why is it FE and not FF? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. and so that location that where it has zero three and then zero zero, that's one e offset mm -hmm. from the address of ship lookup table. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So okay. let's change the. Uh, I want to change that constant that you have for the ship um, timer, the rotation timer. Let's make it something really big. I want to see okay. how that behaves. Um, so let's make it something like. Um, four zero okay and then um, save that and let's rebuild and reload the rom so we're not going to do anything until we hit 40 frames basically right uh no it's a uh, 64 frames gotcha oops hit the button there we go all right so go back to your debugger uh window and just kill that breakpoint we don't need it anymore and then uh, control t to reload and then F5 so that it actually runs. And then we just need to see your screen, the, the actual game screen. I can actually hit left. Yeah, and then press the... See, it's moving way more than it should. It is. That's Visually, it's actually hard to tell the difference between 4 and 40. It's still moving. Right, and that's fast. why I wanted to use such a big value because there should be a very, very big difference, and I'm not seeing one. Let's um, let's confirm that that actually took effect. Let's go back to... Um, let's see if we can find our controller... Um, sorry, the ship movement code. Um, we would want to do look for a compare of with 4.0... No, sorry. In the in the debugger, we want to yeah, we want to look for that code, the move ship one, but in the actual debugger, because I want to make sure that we we're not looking at an old ROM that didn't get reloaded for some reason. Okay, so let's look at the compares. There it is. Okay. Um. So okay. So that's the problem. It's comparing it against the address forty, not the value forty. Ah, and I was just talking about that. It's like when I do a constant, I don't have to do the pound. Well, and I don't think that's the issue. Go back to your code in in the in um, Sublime Text. Sure. Um, put a pound in front of the ship rotation speed. 
and then save that and see if that assembles. I think that might be the issue. We'll know if it complains. Control T. Uh, yeah. Well, did it did it assemble it without error? Uh, yes. It okay. Did. So Control uh, T. Actually, it should... I closed it kind of fast. Let me check. Yeah, no problems. Okay. All right. Cool. So yeah, why don't you uh, do a Control T and let's look at the code. And uh, do do a search for the compare um, before you do that. I want to just see that it actually changed to a compare. Yeah, there it is. All right. So, uh, so why don't you, um, you can uh, hit F5 now. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm doing a victory dance, so give me two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> you got to have a victory dance, Mike. <laughs> These, are good. These are good. So what I'm really gathering, though, is just, I mean, the debugger and mess and this thing is great. Uh, this is good. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, can you can you imagine trying to figure this out without actually being able to see mm -hmm. what code got generated? I mean, that's the thing that I I keep kind of harping on with people when we talk about debuggers because it's just like the amount of time it saves um, is pretty incredible. So so here's a question: How come I can't do this? Um, yeah, because, well, I don't know if you can do that. Can you do that? I don't know. I've never I don't tried. Think you, I don't think you can. I don't think it likes when you do that because reasons. I don't know. Um, I mean, try it and try to assemble it and see what it does. Sure. But the reason I, I'm I, asking is, is like the game states, they're the same way. These are, so I yeah. need to Well, these. right. And you need to do, yeah pound state title pound state right. playing which i don't think bunny boy actually does in his examples see uh, it doesn't complain about that that's no. interesting I'm looking at it again uh, um yeah there's no see this might... is again why i do not like nessasm because <laughs> he's still trying to sell me in ca well yeah because it it is way more precise um you you wouldn't have these kinds of ambiguities um in the code um i i don't know that that actually did anything it may have completely ignored the fact that you put that pound there um the only way we'd know if you, if you go back to your code for a second um and change where we had put the pound um uh in down in your your not here in in the place where we're using ship rotation speed uh, um, if you remove the pound there and it and if it didn't if it didn't break it um then we know that you can put that there which i i suspect that it probably yeah so get rid of the pound i suspect that it will produce the same result we were seeing before and that um nessasm is just ignoring the pound which is i guess in a way good but I guess can also be bad. Maybe <laughs> it's a what do you call it? A feature? <laughs> yeah, right. It's not a bug. It's a feature. It's a feature. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely a feature. Let's see. Is it gonna gripe? Oh, yeah. It's upset about that. Oh. Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. So it it did. I maybe you forgot to save while we were talking because I've certainly done silly things like that while I'm trying yeah. to explain stuff. So it doesn't like that pound. Okay, so you got to have that there, and then you got to go fix it um, at the top to remove the pound. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, and then yeah, save and rebuild, and and then we should see it really, really slowly rotate. That is the hope. Otherwise, I was scratching my head. Okay, it's happy. Yep. All right, reload it and messing and um, control T. Yep, and then F five away, and let's see what let's see what we get. Does that also reload it here? Yeah, it, it's it's all the same thing basically. Okay. So okay. they're not separate sessions. Or nope. Anything. Okay, so right is quick, left. 
I'm holding. Is it moving? Oh, there yeah, it goes. It is. It's slow it's though. Finally moving. <laughs> okay, so go go back to your code. Let's see why right is being. Oh well, I know why right is being we didn't change, differently. Right? We didn't change it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now yeah, let's go change. Let's go change right to what it's supposed to be, and then we can change our rotation speed to something more reasonable. Sounds good. Move ship number two. Um, or move ship number one. We're just looking at the right. At the yep. Left. So there it is. Oops. There it is. All right. All right. I think that's the only spot. Yep. That looks correct. I'm an alt tab kind of guy. <laughs> It's all happy. All right. So if we go back to Messen, it should now uh, behave itself. Yep. Control T. And yep. And yep. what does F5 do? The Control it's, T. It, does, it's, I guess. So Control T, because the debugger is open, it resets the game and it immediately stops the execution of code right at that first line. You have to press F5 to make sure that it actually starts running your code. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll just be sitting there with the instruction right at that one line. Okay, that's looking... Now right and left are the same. Okay. Yeah, cool. So now let's go change that speed um, to, I don't know, whatever value you want. Well, let's go back to three because I have a feeling that what you were seeing as three was totally bogus. Because of the missing pound, it was yeah. just zero. <laughs> it was, yeah, I don't... I'm. I have a feeling it was probably changing in every frame. I'll try zero three for now. Yeah, yeah. So, is this as fun for you as it is for me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't enjoying it. No, I mean debugging. Uh, debugging. Oh yeah, I mean it's 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 it can be it can be really interesting. It can be like this bug that I was dealing with at work that for three weeks we couldn't figure it out. Um. And I ended up doing all sorts of crazy debugging and instrumentation on our code until we finally figured out that it's specifically this one sequence of actions that happens that um, creates this problem. That actually looks just about right. I'd probably slow it down maybe a hair and go to four, but that's... some Yeah, like change it to, I don't know, change it to six. Ten. Let's just see okay. if we see a subtle change compared to before where we didn't see anything. Now, is uh, it going to be dollar? 10, 10 is, that's that's 16. So, A. The dollar is that it's it's in hex. It still trips me out that I don't put the pound up in here. It's kind of like when I was declaring binaries up here, it was mm -hmm. percentage and not mm -hmm. pound percentage. I was like, ah, confusing. Constants, constant, or declaration of constants and variables up here is kind of... Yeah, you might be better off splitting those into different parts of the text file, just like shifting mm -hmm. all the constants together mm -hmm. um, and all the variable declarations together just so you don't have the problem we were seeing before where we were miscounting the bytes because of um, because of the constant defined in the middle. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, let's see if we get back to it real quick. There we go. Okay. But there's also something really satisfying about watching your code get fixed. Yes, I I can't believe, or you, you wouldn't believe how long and how big I've been smiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's pretty significant, you know. Yeah, that that looks about right, and the uh, animation for that rotation is pretty good. Okay, it's going pretty well, yeah. That's a that was a clever way to do the uh, to handle the rotation that table. I wouldn't have thought of that immediately. Um, yeah, but that's oh, I a... was, yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I was like, how in the world? Because in my mind, I'm like, uh, I I want it to basically animate when you press mm -hmm. a button. I don't want it to move. So right. I want it to cycle through tiles. But how do I control? And all these questions came up, and I've just. And then I kind of got frustrated. I was like, okay, combat was stupid. I should have just done Contra. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this 360 degree thing is killing me. Because you know what's next. Moving and shooting. In right. 
So that's, yeah, that, that's going to be another, you know. Well, and then, so for the moving, I think you're probably going to end up doing something similar where you're going to have a limited range of directions that you can move and a lookup table for, okay, if I'm in this one particular direction, right, that it's, um, it's this amount of X coordinate that I have to increment and this amount of Y coordinate that I have to increment mm -hmm. um, in order to make it uh, consistent because like how you do that on the PC on something with a fast CPU is like you could say, okay, well, I want to rotate around in 360 degrees and using trigonometry, trigonometry I can figure out, okay, I, I, this is how much I have to move in X and Y to achieve a movement in that direction in so many degrees off of zero. Um, yeah, I was going to bring something up because I, I think uh, I think I know exactly where you're going with this. But it's, it's too the okay. CPU is too slow to handle that on the six five on the six five zero two. Oops, I get a bigger one. Absolutely, yeah. So when you're talking about ah figures, I had the line selected. There we go. So on a you know semi straight line, well not in a good straight. Okay. And if I want to move in a in a diagonal, I know you're talking about where how many different degrees in a lookup table am I willing to not only do but also calculate to look up. So yeah, you, you have this direction here, but am I really going to have you know infinite number of directions you know here and here and here and etc. Right. So yeah, I mean, you, you if you were if you were determined to make it as finely controlled as possible, you could do something where you say, okay, um, the I, I will do all do de all degrees of range from zero to three sixty, and so you'll have three hundred and fifty nine positions that tell you the exact amount of x and y you have to move to move in those directions, but that sounds excessive. Um, the other problem you're going to run into is um, you're going to have to move fractional amounts of X and Y, which is obviously not possible um, on the NES. Um, and so you're going to have to do you're going to have to do a similar thing to the timer, where you're going to have to count um, count up how many frames of X you you skip before you actually increment X finally. Right. If, if, so like, like if this is like two and a half up for Y, um, um, or sorry, X, mm -hmm. you know, so if this is like two and a half and I need it to be <laughs> here, then here, maybe a frame later is what you're saying. So wait till it's at a whole number like three. Right. Yeah. You can do right. Care. So you can say like, okay, if I'm moving at two and a half, depending on how granular you want to make it, you know, I mean, two and a half would mean that at, at zero, well, let's just use an example first for, before I give you my caveat on that. So if you're doing um, two and a half, so the first frame you're at zero, the second frame you're at two, the third frame you're at five, right? because of the, the fractional part. So you have to figure out the math of how to do that fractional addition with, without fractional numbers um, right. on the 6502. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and, or you're, you're doing, um, you're, you're essentially representing the fractional part in a different bite than the, the whole part, the whole value part, which is uh, like, like maybe you know what I thought of too, and, and see what you think of this. Um, I'm sorry to cut you off real quick. No, it's okay. Go ahead. So, what if I track that fractional into, you know, a uh, you know a variable, you know, like fraction x, you know, fraction y movement. You yep. Know? Yeah, I mean, you'd still need to track the whole x value and the whole x uh, y value. Um, what I would do is do some reading on something called fixed point math. Okay. Um, because basically it's a way of representing fractional numbers imprecisely, but good enough for what you're trying to do here, mm -hmm. um, where you can represent fractional numbers with uh, non-fractional data types. Um, 
and and in a way that isn't extremely inefficient to implement on the NES. Fixed point numbers. Yeah, um, that it's that's an old trick. Um, it's an oldie but a goodie. Um, it's the way that people used to do, you know, these kinds of solve these kinds of problems on older machines, where using um, it didn't matter that it was it didn't it didn't have to be precise because it wasn't like an accounting application um but it did have to be fast um because decimal numbers are extremely slow to calculate and the nes doesn't even have support for it um so mm -hmm. yeah read up on fixed point math if you have any questions we can talk about it but it would allow you <clears throat> it would give you the ability to represent um represent your your fractional part and your whole part separately in two different bytes to do that very fluid um, motion over those degrees that you want to represent. So if you want to do similar to your um, your rotational graphics, if you wanted to have 16 different angles that you want to move at, you would pre-compute what your what your increments are for those directions and you and you know the easiest ones are of course straight up straight down straight right straight left because it's all all the movement in one direction um but it's uh for for the other fractional ones like the one o'clock and one and a half you have to figure out how much the x and y have to move together um, to to make it move in the direction that you want. And the other thing that's kind of maddening about that is that you also have to do it in a small enough increment where the ship isn't jumping across the screen right. or, or or moving at a speed that's inconsistent uh, depending on which which direction you're heading in. Because if you do the math wrong, you'll go faster at a diagonal than you will in you know moving straight to the right or to the or straight up. That's okay because I'm gonna make sure I'm always player one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else will get the cheap math. <laughs> It'll be a feature, Mike. It's a it's a yeah. built-in feature from all. Player one always wins. <laughs> player one always wins. He's the fastest. <laughs> no, that's um, no that that makes complete sense. And uh, what I was basically alluding to was just. Uh, a variable to store just the fraction while keeping the whole number and then testing the fraction to see if it incremented over, uh, let's just say the value 10 is one. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's greater than 10, easily, you know, compare, mm -hmm. then the whole number is, is incremented, you know, by pixel uh, position X or wh whatever I'm trying to yep. do. Yep. Um, uh, and then resetting that uh, back to, whatever value it is minus 10. <laughs> so yeah, that's the right basic idea. Okay. Okay. Well, I wasn't too far off mentally. No. Or, yeah. So it'd be kind of like another ship lookup table though, where I'm just, uh, as far as movement as well though. Right. Cause you don't want to have to recalculate what that direct, what those directional adjustments are every time you make a new adjustment. Um, because like I said, that's slow. Yeah, I think it would be, uh, then the lookup table, I would probably have two values. The X pixel incrementer, I guess, is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the dollar zero two hundred, basically. How much am I incrementing it by? Mm -hmm. And then the second value is the, the Y attribute. You know, how much am I incrementing it by? And it's yeah. based on similar, like you said, one, one and a half, et cetera, uh, directions. Hmm. That's probably going to be a lot more harder than I think it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the simple, and especially as little experience as I have, you know, I'm honestly double guessing that this might be a little bit more than I can chew simply because, yeah, I've never, hmm, I thought this would be easy just because it's a single screen, non scrolling, non, you know, simple backgrounds. I'm just going to put it, I mean, as you saw, uh, mm -hmm. let's see, but I'll show you real quick. Uh, you know, these are just walls. Here. Right. I'm just building borders, just like, you know, like tank section of combat. Yeah. Uh, with different palettes, of course, but just, you know, uh, I was like, oh, you know what? This will be simple. I'll learn how to finish a game. Uh, but then the 360 movement, this is. Right. Yeah, that is the that is the 
complicating factor because you're right all the other decisions that you made about the way you want the game to work um are are uh they vastly simplify what needs to be done to make a game on the nes Mm -hmm. um but because of well there are several factors right so there's the fact that you can't rotate sprites in hardware or software um that now you have to have this lookup table and these pre-computed, uh, pre-drawn sprite rotations. Right. And then the second part is that, okay, now that you're actually able to rotate in that <laughs> fractional way, you have to be able to move accordingly. And that then is the additional complication that you face. But I think you can do that. That That's, that's more of a, that's more of a, um, that's more of a, programming challenge than an nes challenge i think um okay so it's kind of like the lookup table rotation it, it can be done it's just not a straightforward problem it just has to be solved yeah exactly hey moisture packets thanks for uh saying hi um yeah yeah you're gonna uh, i think what's good is that kevin showed you how to do the ship lookup table so now you have a foundation to understand how to do another lookup table and Mm -hmm. where you're going to, you know, kind of spend a lot of time scratching your head and trying to, you know, trying a bunch of different values and being mad at uh, me for ever helping you with doing this is that, um, you know, getting the the fractional increment of the direction correctly um, computed is, is going to kind of make you crazy a little bit because of the, because of the hoops you have to go through to do something so stupid, like just add a half and a half, you know? <laughs> well, it took 48 lines just to rotate a sprite, <laughs> not including the ship lookup table, which is another 16. So, yeah. So, I mean, it all boils down right here. Okay, we're going to update 205 and 206 <laughs> to, you know, the first and second attributes of that row that mm-hmm. you're currently on. Right. I mean, and the thing is that in in a higher level programming language, you might be able to do this a little bit less verbosely. But if you think about what you're actually doing, there's really it's not really that much per se. It's like, okay, you're checking if it's if right is pressed. So you're you're grabbing the value, you're checking the first bit. Um, If you if it's not set that you're doing something that you're just skipping. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise, you're you're incrementing the you're incrementing a value, you're, you're checking to see if it's hit your threshold. And if it hasn't, you're skipping ahead again. Mm -hmm. Um, And if it did, then you're, you're indexing through an array. Right. Um, You know, yeah, Uh, there are more compact ways to, to uh, describe that. And yeah, the compare for FE is, is a little bit uh, unwieldy because you have to understand how that works um but you know it's all just like you develop this mental model for how the cpu works as you clock through each of these instructions um and it suddenly becomes not about how much code you have to write but just how do you get the the limited instruction set of the cpu to do what you want i know it, you're still in the beginning you know so i'm, I'm I'm on week five of Bunny Boy's tutorial, so I'm already diving into uh, issues and getting stuck. And uh, the good thing, though, is uh, like yourself, you know, I thank you for this time. It's just the the community, uh, you know, you guys, and uh, it's great. Uh, I can ask questions, and there's just so many people that are like, oh, yeah. You need a pound sign, you nitwit, <laughs> or you know whatever the issue is. Or oh yeah, you're you're decrementing twice because there's a uh, two variables in each row of that. Uh, right. Array. You know that's why you're comparing to FEs. Oh okay okay. Yeah. So just the ability to you know understand you know where everybody's coming from. And like I told Kevin when he was initially showing me this this uh, function that he so elegantly wrote for me i was like this is really cool yeah and, uh he's like yeah try this out and see how it works for you and if not you know yeah, just tweak it and i was like okay <laughs> but uh just just the willingness to help and yeah. uh, uh you guys both and just the community inspire me to be 
I want to be able to be at the level where I can instantly look at someone's code like you did. Oh, I see the problem. You didn't initialize the low byte. Okay, you got to initialize it. You can't assume that the address offset is correct, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I want to be able yeah. to do that. Right now, I'm just like, well, I know what this opcode does, but I really don't, like you said, mentally have a visual picture of what the NES needs. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, how come you don't understand what I'm saying? I said, <laughs> do this. What is wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the, I mean, that's, that's kind of the thing where you, you get this appreciation for these games where you're like, dude, somebody wrote Castlevania this way. And, and, and you're like, I mean, yeah, at the time they didn't really have any other option because if they were going to make a game for that system and, you know, make some money doing it, they were, that's, that's what you had to do but at the same point it's it's you're just you know there's there's a definite appreciation you gain for for those games um and also for for being able to work with modern tools where you know you're writing a loop in c sharp to do some basic stuff and you're just like oh my god this is so much easier than if i had to do this and you know especially <laughs> with complex data types right you know because you know now you just throw whatever data type you feel like you know oh i need a dictionary here to look this up and oh this is you know this is i i need to uh, I need to check this string and if the length is too, you know, like you just do stuff and you don't even think about what it is you're doing. Um, uh, this, this like puts it into perspective, like, man, there's so much stuff going on for all of those little instructions and, and loops and checks that we take for granted in these programs we're writing every day. Absolutely. In fact, you, you kind of hit on something. I'm going to, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to bring this up again. I think that uh, uh, Castlevania is less impressive now to me than Asteroids because they only had to do one 45 degree vector of stairs and the, mm -hmm. the speed and the XY updates of uh, uh, what is it, 201 and 20, uh, I forgot the other, 204, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I got to do. So much more than that. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you the 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 sum the end the end result is essentially the same. It's just how you get there is a little bit maybe um, more complex for that. But then at the same point, you know, it's like okay, so then are you going to have to do some of the more complex things that they do? It, it's all it's all trade offs, right? It's all just like where where do you want to be spending your time making this game and and um i i think you picked a good i think you picked a good way to start because even the rotation like i said that's a that's I'm a program you think that way <laughs> well i mean it's you could have you could have uh you could have done worse and said oh i'm gonna i'm gonna write a platformer like super mario brothers and right and, uh, you know and most people look at super mario brothers and they go oh it's incredibly simple but it is not it is not a simple game to mm -hmm. implement from scratch on the NES. Um, so, yeah. So to think, so you, you, you've limited the scope pretty well. Okay. Well, I, I will, I will sl slightly agree <laughs> <laughs> only because I'm looking at the road ahead and it's like, Oh my um, gosh. Bullets you, you, you have the choice right now to say, well, you know what, for my first go at this, I'm just going to allow movement in four directions or eight, even eight directions. And the, the nice thing about that is then it's simple because you know that, um, the diagonals only have to move half as much as the straight on directions to achieve the same, uh, velocity. Um, sure. so you could cheat, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, I, but i guess i get the sense that you don't you really don't want to uh i, I kind of have the mentality of it's easier for me to learn by just doing what i want to do and trying to meet the goal mm -hmm. I, the funny thing is a lot of people are uh, um you know especially on even discord and bunny boy and a lot of the forums uh, and rightfully so, I see where they're coming from. But but we're highly, highly discouraging full game development. They they said no, start small, make make a guy jump around on a screen, and that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, I'm I'm thinking, well, that that 
that gives me the handle to the hammer, but I need a hammer. <laughs> so I might as well just go ahead and learn by saying, you know what, I'm going to build a house. And, oh, okay, I need to learn how to pour concrete. Well, let's start with pouring concrete. How do you do that? Where do I get the tools? Uh, how do I mix it? What, you, know, it, it you know, you get where I'm going. So yeah, yeah. I yeah, that. and well, and the problem is that I think, um, yeah, no, you're exactly right. I mean, um, the the I think their perspective is one of, though, that, you know, you're you're saying, well, I, I want to build a house, so I'll learn how to pour concrete and get started. But it's like most people don't start that way. Most people are like, I'm building the Empire State Building for my uh, first project. Do you I know see. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, so like you joked before, it's like, okay, I, I'm just going to make Contra. That's easier. But like there are people who, who will start and they'll be like, well, I want to make Contra. And that's the first game they try to make. And it's like... The people who made Contra had decades of experience, you know, programming, or at least more than you do, um, and on hardware that was similar, where it was very low level. So they're translating a skill set that they had from another platform to the NES before they wrote it when they were working at Konami. Y you just said you've never programmed before. So, like, maybe you want to choose something a little bit smaller in your yeah. case you've programmed before so you have a sense of what actually has to happen um right. and you know and you chose you you chose a, a shanty in the woods not <laughs> not <laughs> a <laughs> what no, i was just say well it was either this or you know pitfall three so <laughs> and i was like you know what i think combat is a lot simpler and yeah. uh you know uh I think you're right. It, it's uh, it's definitely easier with eight. And I think, though, that once I figure out how to do one of them, I just mm -hmm. need to do math and figure out the others. And, you know, it, yeah. it is fractional. It's going to be a little pain in the butt. But it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, well, you know, I have to do it eventually. I might as well just do it in this game because it won't be very fun if it's only four directions. No, definitely. And that was always part of the appeal to me. And when it came to playing tank is that freedom of, of movement was, or sorry, combat um, mm -hmm. is that freedom of movement um, was, was unlike how any other game, um, you know, we were playing at the time mm -hmm. function. So it was really uh, extremely appealing um, and and I totally get why you want to do that so uh, I say go for it and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, where it goes next yeah me too it's um, my buddy actually who, who I said is a gamer not a, a developer I kind of shared with him what I was doing and where I was at and you know he just kind of infamously did the two hand bow down wave at me and <laughs> Yeah, I'm not worthy kind of bow down. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> not even close. He says, well, based on what you're telling me, I'm expecting this game to be released in what, 2025? <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, I guess, I don't know. It won't be that bad. Yeah. You're, you're, you're super close to, I, I think you're closer than you think. I mean, you you should have... If you keep working at it, I think you'll have that movement stuff down pat in, you know, the next couple of weeks because I know you have other stuff you're doing too. But mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's like that other thing of, you know, if I if I weren't doing if I if I wasn't married and didn't have a child and <laughs> and wasn't wasn't working and, and just was sitting in my basement all day programming my game, I'd be done. Mm -hmm. Um but you know, there's like other commitments that have to be addressed so Absolutely. um so i i think uh, you know <clears throat> i meant like i've real time i've worked on the game for about six weeks maybe seven um which you know in in retrospect that's not bad i've made some decent progress but it feels like forever because it's you know two nights a week at best um so it's it's a slow going thing but yeah, I think you, you'll. I think you'll be fine. I think you have enough of a foundation here that you'll you'll figure that out. Um, oh, and if not, you'll come to the Discord and you'll talk to us like you have been, and 
<laughs> and people will give you, you usually you come in at, at at late times where i'm i'm already asleep and i don't know if kasumi ever sleeps because i was about to say i don't think kasumi and sumez well, and... sumez is in europe so he oh, he has the benefit of um time zone shift kasumi is on the east coast as far as i'm aware and yeah he he is always like there are very few times where i've you know said something that he could respond to and he was not online so hmm. um yeah he he's pretty much always um always on but uh you know at any given point in time that's kind of the nice thing about it is that you know if if kasumi is in there for some reason sumez is and and others are you know in at various points in the day kevin will be in sometimes i'll be on sometimes um mm -hmm. there's that guy um uh Kakuf who is on he's learning and he's from europe also and so uh, there are answered a couple i know who you're talking about yeah 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 and and uh you know he's 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 in beginner mode too he's been asking questions about uh, assembler and stuff like that but sim similar to you he's really determined to to learn it and and has just been making progress slow and steady just you know not getting discouraged by <laughs> by things being broken and just learning and and persevering uh, yeah just I, I wasn't laughing at anything particular it was just when you said <laughs> But when he said he's like you determined, I, I was like, I think Mike chose a delicate word there. I think he was about to say stubborn or hard. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to be a little bit stubborn to be doing this in this day and age, right? Yeah. No, I was. Um, my, my wife actually teased me. Uh, uh, she laughed and said, "Well, if anyone can make a game, it's you, because I know you won't quit. You're too hard headed." <laughs> I don't know whether to say thanks or uh, what. <laughs> when I hear smile that. and nod. Yeah, I just smile. Yep, that's that, that's me, honey. But, but no, this was awesome because the uh, I learned a lot in debugger. I'm F5, Control T, uh, <laughs> looking at the CPU status, um, the cycle. You know that that's helpful. I can at least run through a section and maybe get a sense of how long it's taking. The stack, uh, I, I still don't have enough use for it to understand it. You're not really doing anything super crazy yet where yeah. you need to worry about that. If you start doing things where you're pushing and pulling things off the stack because you're running out of registers and you are and you don't want to dedicate specific variables, that's where that becomes useful because suddenly you're like, oh, my stack is huge. That shouldn't happen. It's, something is wrong, you right. know, so... Um, so yeah, it's just all about the way your code works. You may not get there in this project because you may not need it. Yeah, but no, the the uh, the debugger, like like I was saying, the understanding the labels now, the flags that are updated. You know, I love how that's highlighted. I never even knew that. So just <laughs> I think just being more comfortable, uh, being able to set watch variables because I'm familiar with that because you can do that in Visual Studio. So mm -hmm. you can say, right click, watch this variable, and it'll do it. Yeah. Um, and then the the thing is like if you and and uh joking aside it may be possible to do this in nessasm like you can in uh, ca65 where it generates debug symbols so that it can actually let you just type in the variable name and it'll know where where it is in ram and um and so then you don't have to find the address you can just type in buttons one or buttons mm -hmm. too and it'll it'll look up um the value in the address um but i don't know off the top of my head um if it's possible i feel like it is yeah but... i think that's what i was actually looking at i was like let me let me copy this real quick oops i did that real quick uh that's a good good point let me um edit that real quick and I'm just going to say, I think I can just do that. Um, and it'll give me, oops, I think it's dash H for help. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Ah, here we go. So why does it keep covering up where you are? There we go. So show segment usage that's what i use right now is minus s listing file output level 
I'm not sure what that is. Force macro expansion. I don't know what that is. Adding a one header. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Create a Motorola S record file. I don't know why you'd want to do that. An in file. File to be assembled is. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't quite see it there listed as. Yeah, look at what the S record file is. Um, file format converts binary information in ASCII hex text format. This file. Oh, I wonder if it generates the ROM, uh, the raw opcodes in, in a text document, so you can look at the the opcodes that got generated. Mm -hmm. Like, what like, about... sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, no! I, I was just say, what did uh, what did it say about the minus L listing file output level? Is it like more verbose? Yeah, I think so. Um, that gives you logs. It it's probably. So it's a okay. So it's just um, it's 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 how while it's assembling what the it, it gives you some information. Um, let's see, disable completely the listing file. Oh, so we go back to your folder for a second. Sure. Um, and look at my original back. Is file? there look at that dot deb file? I was going to ask you, I was like, I know it creates a NES, and then this one is the oh, name table. What is that? Let's take a look at that, too. I don't even know what to open it with. I guess Notepad. Try Notepad++, plus plus, yeah. Uh, that, those are your variables. So let's go go to Messen. It should be able to load that. Um, click on Debug. Uh, no, click on file. I'm sorry. That's, um, no, uh, wait, actually it is. It's under workspace. Import labels. Import label? Yeah. Yeah. That, click on that. Okay. That's good. Now click on file and then... Quick question just came to mind then, Mike. Yeah. Does that mean that now it knows what button? Now it knows. Is? Now it knows what your functions are called. So if you double click on ReController one on the right there, I think it should jump to. It has. We haven't gone that far yet. That's the next thing we're going to do. Double click on where it says ReController one on the right, under your functions. Yeah. Double click that. So that's bringing you to. That's where the code is for read controller uh, one so now click on file and go to workspace again like we did just a moment ago and click on um import uh, click on auto load debug mlb files i'm not sure what that did yeah Click on the file and go back to the workspace sure. submenu there again. I want to see you click on auto load CDL files too. Okay. Um, hmm. Go, go back to that file we just opened up. This one here? Yeah. Um, so those are the labels. Close the close that FNS file and let's go look at the other the dot deb file. Uh, quick question though, Mike, is this the address at where yes. it's been, where that byte is held? That's the ad that's the address where that where that label actually points to. And is that based on the bank then? So is that why C zero is where a lot of these are at? Yeah, because they're all within that first bank that starts at C zero zero zero. Okay, uh, close this out, or yeah, close it? that out, and let's go back to the folder. Let's open up that .deb file. Okay. Same thing. You can do that in Notepad plus plus. Um, okay, so that's well, not area all right. Something. Close that out. Um, I don't know what that .deb file is. So let's do this. Let's um, go back to your batch file that you had before for a moment. This one here? 
uh, yeah, the the one that uh, actually does something, not the one that had the minus H in it. Okay, yeah, this is one. Okay, and just add um, space and then dash L and then uh, three. Okay. Yeah, and save more, that. So we can get, right? Yeah, and let's run that. Let's see if that adds variables to um, go open up that uh, .fls file again. That looks the same. Yeah, same. go go back to the folder. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have generated anything new. So it looks like you might only be able to get the the labels, which I mean that's still helpful, but um be nice if if you can get the variables as well i don't know what this deb file is but yeah yeah it's some sort of binary data but it's not well i guess that's change rename that to dot de dbg i wonder if it'll I, uh, understand that file format so go back to messin and then, um, yeah, under workspace, uh, import label, um, auto load. It's already auto loading. Um, can't close, close the debug window and then reopen it. So it should have already uploaded. So, um, hmm. Didn't find buttons one still. Oh, that's what I typed in. It, it wasn't listed as a. No, I know. And it wouldn't list it there for that particular thing. Go t just type, retry typing it. Um, I don't know if that's reloaded. I have, imagine it is, but just for the sake of. Uh, you can do buttons two or something like that, you know. Yeah, so it's not loading the variables. Hmm. Uh, Will be something you should ask on the Discord. I'm sh I would be su surprised if there wasn't some way to make it work. Um, just because it's already doing the labels, so that's like half of it, you know. Yeah. But the nice thing is, then you've got your labels that you can uh, you can look at. You know, like okay, if it's moving the ship or or whatever. Right. So a bunch of them in here. Yep. Move ship to there's a bunch. Yeah, some of them are the predefined ones for the the PPU and stuff like that, but a lot of, but all of yours are in there now too. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't see buttons. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be defined in another file or something. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Well, oh. interesting. Very interesting. Wow. That's a lot to intake. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I'll tell you what, Mike. I think I'm sold on Messin, though. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think it. it's an amazing tool. Yeah, I was definitely scared of it. Definitely more familiar with it. Uh, I think what I'd be interested in, I'm going to start doing some more research and finding out if there's any messing, you know, YouTubers out there who have done a lot of, you know, debugging videos. Um, you know, I just haven't come across any. I don't, I don't see them. Debugging just seems to be a, well, you'll figure it out. <laughs> kind of a uh, topic. Yeah, I don't know that there there are any videos that are specifically detailing topics um, around debugging, but it you know that might be something that I can put together in in some of my videos since that seems to be something that's not well covered just in general. Fixing this while we're talking because I just figured uh, do it now before I forget. <laughs> Pound sign. So pound sign before a constant yep. that's declared instead of 
I still don't understand why you can't just put a pound sign when you're declaring it, but hey, okay, whatever. Hey, you know, pound sign for the win. It saved us twice tonight. I know, right? Wow. Wow, this is uh this is good. Uh it it definitely helps to see um uh, not only the debugger itself, but uh, how someone else thinks, you know, I, I'm coming at this with my own preconceived biased opinions on, okay, 6502, you're just stupid. I specifically <laughs> told you to rotate slowly because I put, you know, the ship rotation speed at three. Why are you, I don't, you're, you're just retarded. Okay. You don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but your, your debugging methods are a little different and, when you first approached the problem, uh, you went right to the debugger. You wanted to see the breakpoints. You wanted to see, you know, how the value was getting, or if the value was even getting called, if it even made it to the compare, and then what it was comparing to, and you immediately saw it was comparing to dollar forty instead of the value forty, and that's. I just don't think that way. I have to change. <laughs> it, the syntax isn't, my eyes don't see that. But yeah, it's what it's comparing to. What's the problem? Like, I don't, you know, uh, comparing addresses, vice values is still, uh, it's kind of like the LDA and STA. I, I sometimes get stuck when I'm looking at it. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm storing what's in A to the address. Not, okay, got it. Not, it does take me a while to read it still. Yeah, that, that's what's uh, tripping me up when I debug is because I'm reading it very slow, you know. So uh, that just that, that, comes with time, though. Yeah. So now seeing seeing the way that you debug and then learning even the shortcuts and everything, but launching the debugger F5 Control T, you know, just getting it reset, and then watching, you know, now I know how to load the functions. I can look at the cycles, uh, watch the different registers. You know, even the flags, which I'm going to safely ignore for now <laughs> until I need to, just like the stack. Uh, that's kind of how I work, like when I say when I build a house. It's like, well, I'll figure out how to, you know, wire uh, an electric socket when I you know, am done painting the or done laying the foundation because I don't really need to know that now. Uh, that's later on. So I just don't want to get too overwhelmed, I guess. And so I just, you know dive deep into what i'm currently struggling with and then yeah work through it no and, and it's easy to get overwhelmed there is a lot so yeah especially for your first project i think <laughs> you're doing fine and i think you just need to continue to take it slow and get things going and you're you're doing the right thing of asking for help when you when you need it so thanks for that that's a <laughs> that's a good way of saying uh or a nice way of putting it, you know. Uh, a lot of people don't like to ask for help, and um, I'm not one of those. If I get stuck, I'm like, well, I, in, in the same in the same time too, it's it's kind of a. And to anybody who does watch this later or is still watching now, is this it, it's. I can relate to the the feeling of I don't want to ask because, I should know this. There's Bunny Boy tutorials. Well, that gets you, blueprints. It doesn't mm -hmm. actually foundation and there's a huge difference right and, uh, it gives you the blueprints and um having to actual type it up do it um you know that that debug uh i didn't know where to start when the controllers weren't reading i'm like looking at the code a thousand times and it's just again recognizing the syntax um yeah i did not catch the pound sign i was loading into x you know zero from the address zero one because that had been zeroed out during the clear mem. I yep. clearly understand the problem, but I didn't see it. I've been staring at this for almost a week. I, like, <laughs> I don't see a problem. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my code. There's something wrong with this stupid 6502. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's broken. It doesn't work right. <laughs> got, a, got a cartridge over here. I got to make sure that it can still play Super <laughs> Mario Bros. The thing is broken. Uh, it's, um, CPU, CPU needs to be replaced. <laughs> yeah, and I think what threw me for a loop was I, I didn't do a lot of copy pasting, as you can tell when I, when I type in new, it's something that I typed up. Mm -hmm. The reason that I'm typing it is because I want my eyes and fingers to 
both be able to recognize when I've typed something wrong, not just. Oh my yeah. Eyes. And um, so my debugging skills start off with a visual and muscle memory kind of like, wait a minute, it's that, that didn't feel right. That doesn't seem right. And after moving everything into different banks and typing up everything, I mean, that was what I had been doing for the last month, which is why I hadn't done any videos. It just plus we had the tournament and that was taking up all the time, but mm -hmm. for that. So I was typing up all the stuff, moving and arranging everything into different banks the best way I knew how, you know. You know, I'm already saying, well, in bank three, I'm going to put some more tiles and animations and stuff like, you know, um, like if this cowboy's walking or blood splatter, you know, <laughs> whatever I can think of at the time. It's like, okay, that's that's what I'm going to do for this bank. Like, is that right? I don't know, <laughs> but that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I was just, you know, I was doing a lot of typing. So that's that was a typo. And for whatever reason, I, I, yeah, I just could not debug it. And both times, like you said, the pound sign bit me twice. It's a subtle thing, so it's understandable. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And and to be fair, part of it is also I've had it bite me enough to know to look for it now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I bet you the bounce one never bites me again, so now I know to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's just muscle memory, repetition, and um, yeah, I, I just needed to ask for help. And uh, uh, it's hard to ask for help sometimes on Discord. It's uh, when you want to paste entire links of code, it's like something doesn't work. Uh, it's mm -hmm. like, Anybody to help you but at the same time i wasn't sure where the problem was right so i didn't know what code to paste i was like well the controllers don't work no more well what'd you change and in my mind i'm thinking everything <laughs> because i <laughs> retyped the entire code it was right. like when you had the zero page and you moved everything out of e-blank yeah you retook, you, you read it everything yeah and that's what i did so I, I just didn't know what to do and uh where to start so uh, what was it that keyed you in to look at read controller one and two? Uh, what was your first thoughts? Like, is it getting there? It was basically, I think, where you started because you made me put a, I think you made me put a breakpoint at the JSR to see if it, it was even being called. I think it was breakpoint. before that. Yeah, it was, or it was after that. It was in the actual subroutine. Well, my, yeah, my first question is always like, okay, I'm assuming that this thing happened because, well, why wouldn't it? But did it actually call read controller? Did JSR read controller one actually get executed or not? Um, so that was the first thing we wanted to actually verify is that the code was actually going where we thought it was going because <clears throat> again, from experience, <clears throat> excuse me, from experience, you know, you, you're, you're looking at a problem and you're like, there's no way this problem could occur because it's getting to this point and the point does this, and then that results in that and it's not happening. So how is that even possible? And it's like, yeah. you, you finally, you know, look at it in some way where you're like, oh, it's not even calling that. Mm -hmm. And then you realize you've been looking in the wrong po place the whole time. So part of my debugging, you know, spidey sense is always just like, <laughs> let's, let's narrow it down to where the problem is actually happening first, because otherwise you could spend a lot of time looking at, looking at problems where they don't exist. Like you're looking at, it's like when you go to the doctor and they're like, oh, well here, we're going to prescribe you this medicine for this problem you have, but they didn't bother looking at why you're having that problem. Right. And it turns out you have some other issue that's causing that. And it's like they're treating the symptom, not the cause. Like um, I have an aspirin, but well, if you pull the nail out of your head, you know, you, you probably wouldn't need <laughs> aspirin for the headache. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so that was the thing. I wanted to make sure we were actually calling that. And when we confirmed, okay, yeah, we're actually calling that code. Well, mm -hmm. all right. The next thing is when that code is called, we have this expectation that we're going to see the memory change because you press a button, it has to update the memory because then that update to the memory influences the code that later on runs and determines what to do with the ship. So let's look at the memory and we were looking at the memory and the memory is not changing. It's like, okay, well, there's the problem because the code that, I mean, we, there may be a problem with the code that's actually changing the ship that we're not aware of yet, but 
right off the bat, our problem is that the code that's looking at this point in memory to determine should I do something is always saying, no, I shouldn't because that memory never changes. Um, so gotcha. again, just zeroing in on that. So then, okay, well, why isn't it changing? Where does it get changed? Do we change it in multiple places or just that one place? And we said, okay, it only changes in that one place. Yeah, there you go. So you can see as you're pressing those keys, the, the value is changing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's uh, validating. Is it getting called? And then, well, if it is getting called, are we seeing what we're supposed to? And is that memory address actually being updated? Because that's where I'm storing that byte. Right. Maybe. Yeah, you're just following the chain. And then it's like, okay, well, if that's getting set the way that it's supposed to, and the ship's still moving wrong, well, then the next logical thing is it's the code that's controlling the ship that's wrong. So I'm let's blaming, look at that. I'm blaming Sour. Okay? He, he made the debugger <laughs> scary, and so I left. I was like, nope, nope, I'm just going to ask for help. I don't know what's going on in here. The debugger is just, there's way too much icons. There's so much, uh, you know, options, and uh, there's so many drill downs. Uh, there was just way too much going on. And, yeah without a tutorial or guide or video or something, it, it was, it was, it was just scary. I just closed it. I was like, I don't know. What's like, I don't know. And I just, so I stared at the code and I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with the code. So I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> the 65 by two is just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's, let's wrap. It's late yeah. for me. And uh, we've been sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. But we've also been doing this for almost three hours. So, Ooh. time flies um but uh yeah. here why don't you why don't you unshare so we can we can see oh we yeah can see you let's see where's the button that do it hey there you are all right cool so uh awesome i'm glad you were able to do this and i'm glad it was useful hopefully people who watch this uh who watched it live or or watching the recording will will find it equally useful Absolutely. This has been great. Uh, guys, when you debug, don't assume anything. <laughs> Validate that it's getting called. Launch your debugger. Put a breakpoint in there, right? And, uh, you know, set up some watch values if you need to, but actually validate that it's pound dollar 40, not dollar 40. <laughs> You'll be just fine. Oh my gosh, the pound sign can go pound sand. That thing is yeah. horrible. Hashtag for the win. So yes, hashtag for the win. All right. Well, cool. So um, like I said last time, um, you can catch up with Jonathan at any time um on his uh if it will maximize on his uh YouTube channel at old school gamers. Definitely should check that out. Um, and he'll be posting updates to his progress uh on his game. Uh, especially now that we got some stuff working, I think we'll see a video soon. Yes, yes, definitely will. Thank you for that. It was a couple speed bumps that ended up being brick walls. So, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to reach out to either of us, we have our videos on YouTube. I'm on Twitter at Clarivus. I don't think you're on Twitter yet, right? Uh, not yet. I'm uh trying to hold back from the itch <laughs> <laughs> and uh i'm also on uh nintendo age as zelius on discord and on the forums and you're on there as old school gamer right yes sir that's me so uh hopefully we'll see you there and ask questions and meet the other awesome people that are on the uh in the community and uh have a good night good night guys all right